Well, that explains everything. <laughs> it's broom broom. You got these disgusting thin lips. That's really rude. Yeah. <laughs> Gus has a tiny mouth. <laughs> no, <is it> <laughs> I'm having a moment here. Civilization four. Something four? Yeah. Civilization. <laughs> Geralt loves Triss. Life's shit. <laughs> Towels touch me on the bum a bit. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts three. Eat your ass three. Eat your ass three. <laughs> Dark Souls. Testy soccer. Final Fantasy seven. Fuck off, that's Kevin. <laughs> Alan Wonderland. Big <laughs> 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 Welcome to Back Pocket for Thursday, the 22nd of April, a mere one day before my birthday, live from the Loki Studios. Oh boy, tonight on the show, we uh, boringly fulfill artistic contractual obligations, but I can't do that alone, so I'm joined by... Gus, can I make anyone a Gilmore Girls style coffee? Yeah, I'm reusing that joke. I like it that much. <laughs> Next to me. Because oh, you look like Luke? Yeah. Got it. Okay. But why, what is the style of a Gilmore Girls coffee? I've never watched the show, I don't know. You've never watched Gilmore You've Girls? You've never, never watched a I've single never episode? never watched an episode of Gilmore Girls. Talk too fast for me. I like talking fast enough myself. That's the whole shtick of it. I know. Uh, well, I'm here also. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. <laughs> and I, I have gave her been uh, nostalgic for a lot of things lately, and I'll talk about them later in the show. And I'm Peter, and you may hear me make some sounds like these tonight. <laughs> 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 oh. And that's because I've hurt my back. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. The Peter Burns soundboard is alive and well. So, it's going to be great. It's been an tip. interesting <laughs> afternoon of just like uh, sitting here. There was actually a time which you said, um, uh, funnily enough, uh, that today is one of those days where someone walked into the office. They'd be like, do all you guys do is just sit around and play video games all day? Because yep. we were all sitting around playing video games. But then occasionally you would just hear Pete go, dog. <laughs> <laughs> It um, doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. And it's like right in the middle of my back. So when it attacks, everything clenches and I just go. Hey. You started the day and you came in and you started lifting things and moving things. I said, if you need help with them, ask me and stop doing it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And just first of all, say yes to that is a big win. But then he started still moving things going. Ugh making noises and I was getting frustrated and eventually I could hear him behind me going uh, and I turned around to be like what are you and he was on the floor stretching to make his back better I was like oh yeah keep doing that <laughs> yeah. that's good that's good so, uh, yeah. Wayne, King, down. Wayne King said do you want a back rub <clears throat> uh it might help Probably not from him. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, well, maybe got, you do. It doesn't have to be strong a sexy hands. back rub. His With a name like Wayne King. King. <clears throat> Fast. It's a play on words. Oh, okay. Uh, of course, we all know that Peter has a penis on his back. Welcome to Back Pocket <laughs> for another evening. Of course, it's not just us sitting in front of the, the camera here. We've got someone else in front of a smaller camera. Uh, and that's Will on the ones and twos. Hey, Will. I think it's a normal size I would argue camera. he has the big camera. Oh, it's a large camera. It's not the <laughs> actual camera, is it? Yeah. It's, it's a large camera. It's true. It's, <laughs> actually, it's big. And it's twice as big we'll as the other camera. We'll take a photo of it. We'll take a photo of it. It's massive. It's enormous and it's taller than anything else. And it's aimed down menacingly like it's the ever watching lie. No, it's watching you. Yeah. <laughs> Will, how's your back? Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. My pants are dry now. I had a, an incident earlier where that's I lost true. all of my water. Yep. Uh, that was the that was the moment I suffered the most today. Was I heard <laughs> calamity behind me. I heard dunk dunk splash, and he was like, "Everything's fine." And I was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> "What happened?" So and what I he actually said because I was sitting here and I heard the spiller. I looked up and he just immediately looked at me and he goes, "Well, it only got on me." And it stands up and he's just drenched. <laughs> and I yep. I was in the bathroom. I went to have a wee and I came out and then looked down. There's water everywhere and my brain just kind of went like, "Was this you? Was you been in the bathroom?" How did you do this? Did you forget to go to the bathroom again, Gus? <laughs> exactly. Flaywood uh, uh, says normal-sized camera, which is a very good <laughs> in-joke uh, to a series that, that's dead now. But uh, <laughs> but funny joke, I watched that bit. Yeah, I watched no, that whole episode of it. That bit is great. And, yeah, and three-story hole is good. Yeah, <laughs> three-story three story hole is very funny. It's just, I mean, it's just such a fun format. 
Yeah. Of like friends hanging out, playing video yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a focus yeah. on the the fun of it and not like try, try hard great. or more yeah, about yeah. the games. It's just about the relationship of friends on a couch. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'd like watch a, it. I'd watch it. Yeah. Like a good version of that might be like one where like two really cool people only play dating games or something and do lots of voices. Yeah. There's no dating in that horror game. <laughs> well, no, there was some relationship there, stuff. Was there? Uh, there was a there was oh, okay. a weird relationship between the two like thirty uh, year old people. That's true. Oh, and remember when the like <laughs> remember when the really dickish guy came back from a scene and the young girl went, "Hey, professor," and he's like, "Hey," it was like none of that was a thing. Are we talking about the same game? No, we're really not. I know because my joke was that you were talking about the dating game and I was like playing it like I was thought we were talking about the horror. We're talking game. about grounded, it which only stars bit, children. But the whole thing is really confusing. Okay, you yeah, we're all to make coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Order up. See, that's how you that's how that's how you do a joke. Uh, all right. I hope you guys are all uh, good. We are in for a fun show tonight. Uh, we've got a few bits and pieces planned, but of course, let's start the show as we always do with what you've been playing. Because I'm just saying, what you've been playing. Have we changed the music to this? <laughs> no, no, no. It just never used to be. I never used to feed it to the studio. Okay, right. Because yeah. it's we are funky. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Loki yeah. Cat. It's always been funky. Loki Cat, I am so sorry that I never knew how funky you were because I've always said it as like, I'm just saying, uh, what you'll be playing, but underneath. Cool <laughs> hippie jazz stuff. I actually just came to realize this is the first segment we started with like, let's give them all fun names and run ins. And this is the only one we've done this. Everything else is just. It's called Pocka. It's called Pickpocket. It's called Pete's Party. That'll be a Pete's Party song. We don't even say that. But this is the only one that was like a proper sen- sentence of a segment. It's the, I'm, hey, I'm just saying. Oh, that it'll be a play. I feel like you've had a problem with it from the start. This? Yeah. The problem is we, I didn't do it with every other segment. Yes. This is going to be a loose fucking show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like, and so just for context, Pete really, like, re- has really fucked his back. So, like, he, he is, he's either going to, he's going to be running on cold tonight. I'm just letting you know. Uh, Steph spent the entire day playing a video game that is emotionally devastating her and literally, literally playing it 30 seconds before we got on air. And I wonder if that's the correct choice. Is an emotional headspace <laughs> to head into an entertainment piece, but we're going to find out. I just feel really, like, invested in this relationship, and I feel like uh, I'm about to be broken up with, and yeah. it's really hard because I can sense her pulling away from me, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I can tell that you're actually shook, and so it's, yeah, it's we're going to have to help Steph through tonight. And then for my case, Will, you can back me up on this one. What did I say when I walked into the studio and sat down? I was I'm like, having a real great day. I'm having a real great day. And then what happened? You didn't. <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything crashed. Everything failed. And I looked at Will like, it's because I said I'm having a good day. So yeah. that's why I'm um, on the red. You had a great day yesterday. Uh, so you were due for a bad day. Yeah, that's what we'll see the results of your yesterday's good day. Both are later this evening. Yeah, oh, totally. But yes, yeah. we, you were complaining. I about broke today. your back, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some that, some I just feel like you and I should be playing a text two. That's where I'm at. Totally. totally. So yeah. Anyway, we, we'll, we'll talk about it later on as well. We'll talk about when we do the special next Tuesday. Yeah. But it's it's felt like we've been having an affair. That's how I've like we've been playing it in our downtime. Like when we both have finished because we're playing a co-op game. It takes two. So then it's like. I've got a spare hour. And Nick's like, hey, are you free? I'm like, yeah, I'm free. <laughs> Just play a little bit. Like, I can give you an hour. And he's like, yeah, cool, me too. And you hear him like rush in, put the headset. Hey, we don't even small talk. We just dive straight in. And we're like, we've got to stop now. Okay, the bye. kids are asleep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can I st- tell them the text message that I sent you? Yes. Last yes night? Can. Um, we're very proud of it. He did, he sent a, he did a I picture. Just, uh, did you do a funny? A point of, a picture. The it's point of Game bit. Club oh. is for everyone to be playing the game. I don't understand why you've turned it into this weird clandestine <laughs> thing. No, because it's a co op only game and it's us we don't ever play co-op games together. it's just they don't it's like together. Uh, like the organ like you two just like live together so it's like oh are we playing the game yeah sure whereas we need to like schedule a time when like we're free we schedule a time just because we live together doesn't mean we live we don't have independent lives <laughs> no, we, if, it, if we weren't doing it on stream we would have finished it pretty quickly i think we would have smashed it in a few nights because we have the ab- ability to do that whereas i'm literally not. like she's in bed <laughs> We can do it. Oh, I see. There you go. There's the. Yeah, yeah. I sent yeah. Gus a message a last voice night because yeah. <laughs> Gus Gus was like I, I I couldn't remember. He'd said there were some nights this week that he couldn't play, and I said I can't remember if you're out or busy tonight. But if you aren't, I am merely one. When I hear it takes two, and I sent him a picture of me sitting there lonely on the couch with an arm out waiting for him to come and play video games. With Aww, wearing sweet. That. a washed out pastel shirt in <laughs> washed out pastel pillows. Yeah, it was like it looked like you were just this blend of your couch. It's like when Tobias joins the Blue Man 
Superman group and can hide against blue objects. <laughs> <laughs> but, but. That's exactly what it's like. But we will play it more soon. Uh, all right, Loki Cat. Loki Cat. <laughs> Funky jazz music, and I'm sure Loki Cat's not lonely. And also, uh, Steph's wearing a Smashing Pumpkin shirt tonight. <gasps> and Loki Cat loves Smashing oh, Pumpkins. That's a good, that's a good segue. So there's a good little that's bit. That's a great shirt. As well. Thanks. That'll do. Uh, I got it off Etsy. I get everything off Etsy. Etsy? Yeah. You're an Etsy? Well I, well, I knew you were an Etsy shopper, but even T-shirts and stuff. Yep. I bought a knitted Nordic jumper off Etsy. I mean, that makes sense. Anything knitted, you have to legally get off Etsy. <laughs> but I feel like most T-shirts, I would have thought Redbubble or Threadless or something, mm. but that's awesome. No. This is not Etsy. <laughs> no. no. And it shows. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's jump into the what you've been playing. But let's start off a little different because, Will, you've been playing something. I have been playing something. I've jumped into the early access for MetaHuman Creator, and I'm now going to press play and then press fade. Um, oh, this God. Is, oh. uh, there it is. I did it. I'm is that you, you did a good job. became a tough? <clears throat> Maybe. You're what? wearing the same shirt. What's a tough? What's what? a tough? Uh, like someone from the 50s who... Uh, uh, like a, uh, a, like a, a bruiser. bruiser. I thought that was a bruiser. A bruiser. Yeah. A grizzer? A greaser. greaser. Yeah, greaser. Gre yeah, yeah. No. Oh, yeah, okay. Did you say grizzer? I said bruiser. Bruiser. A bruiser is like a thug. Yeah. And a greaser is like a bikey. Will, tell us yes, more about your game. <laughs> but specifically the ones in the 50s that had the leather jackets and the pompadour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We've all played. And a switchblade. Has to have a switchblade. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm pompadour, none like of a bullfighter. Uh, what, so this, I'm none of those. <laughs> <laughs> this is me. If there I'm you are. Very old. I found this guy. So basically uh, the, it's cloud-based, it's browser-based, so you don't actually have to download it. Shit. It's an online app. Uh, this is like the closest I could find to my head amongst all the preset ones. Uh, it's, it, I mean, it's kind of... I'd say the closest character creator it is, it's like Sims. So you can kind of stretch and pull on attributes of the face right now. I think you're thinking of Mario 64, mate. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> right. Um, this is an element which I didn't understand because I didn't... Can you blend heads? Yeah. So you can oh, pick a bunch of heads. Okay, go, yeah. Oh, I kind of want more... In oh, that's awesome. Oh, oh God. Can you blend heads? Uh, blend. So if you pick a couple of... Ah! Ah! <laughs> Why? Uh, if you pick a couple of heads, you can kind of... Oh, my God. <laughs> that escalated quickly. There we go. Um, you can pick... The heads that you like, I kind of look a little bit like these people. And then from the different parts of your face, you can then pull... Uh, I'm still trying to learn it here. Uh, you can kind of pull towards that, and that will sculpt the eyes. All right. Oh, wow. like that. Apparently you're James Corden in makeup. <laughs> I, I couldn't work out how to get rid of the lipstick for a very long time. Um, <laughs> That's what I said after the affair with Nick. There you go. So, yeah. <laughs> Pulling my nose down, and it's, uh, it's contorting it to that. But it's really good. I will say it kind of... It does that thing where it's like, that's a person, but I can never make it what you want it to be. Yeah, right. It's like, <clears throat> it's obviously a massive leap in terms of Unreal and like, these are more human than a lot of humans in games. Mm. But I don't think it's quite there in terms of a customizer. Like, it's still very, like, there's still limits of, you can't pull the eyebrow through your skull. It feels like it's, it. yeah, it feels like it's you a way to make to some, that? some sort of loosely directed yeah. characters for your game because yeah. this is a free tool currently or this is the open yeah, so the beta but early access i think it'll be free through it like yeah. a real kind of wait is. so you can use this to create character models for games yeah, that that's what it's for oh, yeah. so right okay you can cool. basically upload whatever you create here uh, to the cloud bring it back into your unreal space and it will be rigged and ready to be a character. So that's the big part is that it's like, I think the user interface is super straightforward and that, yeah, when you move it into Unreal Engine, you've got all the rigging done. So it's a lot simpler to do walk cycles and all that kind of stuff without starting from scratch and yeah. How, um, <clears throat> what am I looking for? How similar does everybody look? Like, yeah, like it's funny, even though it has this blend mode option, it never really feels like you're changing the face that much. Mm. They all do seem very similar as people. <laughs> But I guess, like, if I'm looking at the woman there in that circle... They're, they're decent places to start from, which is a lot of character creators. It's like, I can see myself in that person, and then you can kind of get there. Yeah, and there's some really talented people who can pour mm. over these things. Yeah, totally. Well. And can you sculpt a face <clears throat> from scratch? No, so that's the strange thing. Even though it says sculpt, that's this kind of... Well, I mean, this is blend, but in the same vein, you can only ever really pull attributes out and around and yeah, right. yeah, find okay. a spot for them. So you really like you need to find the right blend of people to put in that yes. up up the top to start before you start manipulating towards right. it. Okay. Yeah, it's kind so of like GTA picking your grandpa and your grandmother and then yeah, that's yeah, yeah. going to get you closer to the character you're kind of looking for. Yeah. Um, but it's amazing, like, Fidel and especially being a cloud-based thing, like mm. not having to download this and being able to create 
it's, as much as the faces are similar, many unique humans is such a yeah. cool thing. And it's real-time rendering a very like complex yeah. model by the look of it. So yeah. that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Like you can turn off the hair and it's you see the bone deformation in the skull. Wow. Yeah, right. And yeah, like the, the res of like, yeah, you've got the hair simulation cloth, you've got pores on all these characters. So yeah, I imagine this is a, a huge sort of fast tracking tool for putting characters in your game and saying, cool, I just don't need to worry totally. myself about like the really bland faces I have in this. And I'll go back to it because the most important thing is you can change the teeth. And it's really, cool. once you know that, the, it's, that's all that you really need to know. There you go. Oh, Jesus. So you can actually, Smile. like, as you see up there, you can change where <laughs> certain molars are or the width of a mouth. <laughs> wow. Yeah, um, wow. So it's, and, like, it, the spacing of the teeth? Yeah. Um, wow. uh, it's, uh, and, like, yeah, the colour of the teeth and gum Terrifying. and everything. And even down with the eyes, you can change kind of the You should be able to make them real crooked. Mm. I'm mm. sure you can. But I, mine aren't that, so I just kept them nice and straight. And nice. so, hey, once so once you've made your character, and I'm talking to you, Will, not you, a game developer, like, was there anything you could do with it? Could you, like... You can kind of push it through. I'll try and find... You can push it through, like, they've got set up, yeah, like, key kind of... Yeah, right. Uh, animations. Again, real-time rendering is... It's incredible. the Death Stranding look in the mirror and yeah. funny faces <laughs> stuff now. Yeah. Like, That's... And, like, I think actually one of the things I was, I was kind of thinking... It gets close. What I think would tip it over, and obviously you can't really do this live yet, is facial capture. Like, if you could bring your energy mm. into that face, I think that would be the moment that you're like, oh, yeah, I can see myself in that. <clears throat> would be yeah. great if they started that basic webcam face mapping yeah. stuff because I've seen Adobe and people play with it. But uh, this, this would be... And also uh, if you could import... For VTubers and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're being oh, great. Please, let's get off the anime characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. I want to see and if you could import it into... Is Have this Unreal Engine 4 or 5? Uh, I yes. think this is just 4 because you can grab this and chuck it into into the mm. one that's available free. Yeah, cool. Yeah, okay. Amazing. Yeah, like it would be sick if you could just like pull this character model into Unreal games <laughs> and just, like, replace the protagonist. Well, I'm sure that's sick. what they're... Well, maybe not. No, I'm, I, mean from a, okay. I mean from a consumer using this, go, like, oh, I want to yeah, oh, right. jump back into... Yeah. Like, Senua. Into Gears of War. <laughs> into, yeah. Gears, yeah. into Gears of War yeah. as me. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. as well. As literally this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, Will, did you choose that shirt because it's kind of the same color well, as Well, I, I did. I was, like, <laughs> there was there's very few clothing options, and... Isn't he, he's a little, he's a Look how happy he is. Um, and I realized <laughs> there was a jumper. And I was wearing, thinking about wearing a jumper today. And I was like, it's fine. We'll I know. Because it means that you planned out your outfit for today, last night, yep. based on a video game, which is pretty hardcore. That is hardcore. Um, and yeah, I, I eventually got rid of the lipstick. So it's fine. There you go. There's, there's like a less I, I miss it. vibrant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he seems less fun now. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. 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 There he is. Uh, cool. That is nice. Meta Human. Uh, yes. And it is free on the Epic Games Store. Is it you, free? You kind of, it's early access, just so you just sign up, and okay. eventually you'll get given access. It's kind of one-hour sessions, but you can keep going in. Yeah, right. Um, throughout. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Uh, Peter. <clears throat> yeah. You've been uh, in the Epic Games Store as well. I did. I did a similar thing. I signed up for the core. I think it's beta. I think it's in beta. Um, Core is basically Epic's. We talked about it on the news on Monday. Core is basically Epic's Roblox. It's a, um, it's Unreal Engine, a uh, lot of building tools, uh, but it's also just like a space where a bunch of community created games are um, housed in the same space that are very easy to jump between, uh, try out a bunch of different things. Uh, it's really quite cool. Um, everything feels a bit like Fortnite. I was going to say everything looks a bit like Fortnite. Yeah, know. everything looks and feels like Fortnite, which, um, you know, is fine for some. Uh, you get over the aesthetic pretty quickly when it's like mm -hmm. every game looks like Fortnite. Yeah. But uh, when you look past that, because this is just that's just the engine skin, right? Mm -hmm. The types of games that are getting created in this are really, like, creative and varied. Um, and if we look at my footage, I just jumped in and, like... There's just a bunch of different hexagons you can walk through <laughs> to different types of games. Oh, I love that. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, so there's this hub that makes it like, this is an, the, the gaming interface to it all. Yeah. There's, there is like, you hit escape and it, um, uh, I just walked into this one that I'd never seen before and it downloaded the game. It's very reminiscent to me of um, Warcraft 3's uh, mod, mod stuff. Yeah. Sure, stuff. yeah. Where you go, like, I just want to launch into this, and you're just like, cool, we're downloading that in the background while you, like, load into it, and then you're in. 
Has that, have you come across <coughs> anyone try to recreate games that already exist? There's totally IP lawsuits about to... <laughs> <laughs> and there's but, definitely genres of game that are being aped in this video. That's sure. my favourite thing whenever you, you come across something that has a, a great... Um, tool for user generated content is to instantly it's just people trying to make games that already exist. Just golf with your friends? In dreams I was playing like a Skyrim ripoff and yeah. then like Mario and all kinds of it's things. A, it's, it's a funny one because yeah you do see a lot of that as a way of people testing uh, the, yeah, testing the creative tools and the first thing they kind of want to do is make something that already exists. Yeah. And yeah. it's a strange mindset but it's also and a way... And people gravitate towards those. Too. I'm like oh Skyrim. But, but you understand that like the first, <laughs> the first time with a tool set it's like well the hard... Is there are so many hard parts to this, so why don't I remove some of the hard parts and have someone else come up with the idea? So I'm just going to. Why don't I remove possibly yeah. the hardest, which is the creative yeah. process? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of games in here. Like, and yes, there was. Um, we'll skip a little bit of it, but it totally wasn't worth showing. There's an Attack on Titan thing. Yeah, right. uh, and you yeah, just right. skip around one of the walled towns that someone's made, and it was janky as fuck. Oh, that's why they had the two swords and jetpacks, <clears throat> and you were flying, and yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a survival game um, uh, that. It seems to be pretty popular. It was at the top of a lot of lists, mm -hmm. uh, but it is like, it's, you know, it's pretty basic. But it's another one of those things where you're like, okay, this is an entirely different genre. I was just playing mini putt putt golf, yeah, yeah. Mm. and now I'm doing this, running around, collecting mats. Uh, here's a dude chopping down a tree that I tried to fight because I didn't realize it wasn't PvP. Um, and, like, building up a town. He went straight for the murder. I did go straight for the murder. person's just <clears throat> minding their own business. Just keep skipping through, Will, and we'll see flashes <laughs> of different things. No, no, this no, I want to go back to the murder. <laughs> this is like a... This is Death Wall, which is a game where you're running away from a wall and you can... The more time you spend in it, you get speed upgrades and stuff. Oh, I got killed oh by the God. wall. Uh, killed by the wall. <laughs> uh, I want to show you some of the, the menu, dude. Like, you, I think just before the wall stuff, yeah. So this is the... This was That was at the top of a mountain. You're taking the same character into all these games? Yeah, so I think the character you bring across... Um, I looked through some of the menus um, a little later and it looks like you pick your Unreal model right. to pull into all these things for the most part. That interface with all the thumbnails was the basic interface mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rather than the hexagon interface. So you hit escape and that pops up out of any game. It's like, oh, you're done with this one? Jump into this one. Wow. It's very much about just like pushing you through to try everything. Cool. Um, and if you jump a little later, you can see some more uh, like polished ones. Sure. This is a third person shooter MOBA um, where you kind of... Oh like, yeah, they used to have one of those. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> but um, it's interesting what you're saying about the idea, like with a lot of those sort of, uh, sort of self-made Minecraft mods and things. It's like if you like, if there's a cool gameplay idea there and it's being uh, taken up by a lot of players, it's very easy to quickly look past the Fortnite aesthetic or the yeah the fact that this is in a can make mini game engine. Like if again that core gameplay, pun intended, is like is fun, then these things can take off like wildfire. Totally. I think it has, like, obviously Roblox is really successful. Fortnite is the biggest thing in the world. And to be able to combine those two things is a really, really cool play by Epic um, because so many kids are familiar with this playing an engine that looks like this mm. uh, and they're going to be able to try a bunch of different things. Um, I think as long as there's some moderation because there is clearly some, like... Yeah, like Attack on Titan and a bunch of IP that are clearly not getting paid for getting put into this. Um, so there's like potential, I guess, for some things to slip through the net that are probably not safe for kids. But mm. uh, I think the moderation will be there because it's epic, right? So, yeah. Is there um, a straightforward what's the most played or what's the top of the list? I think if you jump to the last thing I played, uh, Will, it was um, it's called Spell Shock 2. This is it. Uh, mm. This was always full yeah. servers. Um, it's like a yeah. It's like an it's like MMO um, PvP. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, you like there's a capture the points thing, but you've got like six abilities, and you upgrade a class, and you put like time into a class, and you upgrade that class. Um, and it's yeah, it's just like a PvP mode. But yeah, there's things like this was made by um, the internal development team. I was going to say, are these right. all internal? Okay. Games uh, or some of these. This were. one is. Everything else wasn't. Yeah. I think even that. I think even that uh, MOBA isn't. This so, is just to like show you what's possible. Yeah. This well, this was them going like, hey, we've put this tool set out. Let's build things with the tool set to prove that it can be done mm -hmm. in a way that makes something pretty impressive. Yeah. And like this has cutscenes and hmm. like it's. And it seems to have like a cut like a custom UI. Yeah. Like it like 
maybe not completely custom, but definitely more stylized towards the idea of this spelly mage game as opposed to like a shooter. Absolutely. But I, you see the same elements of UI in sure. other little things yeah. like that mini golf game that some random made that you're like, okay, cool. Those things are really like plug and play kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. So you're easy just, for you're devs to chuck on top of their selecting game. Selecting designs from like a palette of different like UI. Mini- I mean, I haven't used the back end of it, but that is the impression I'm getting from what I'm seeing popular on the list is that people are making a fun idea with the tool set that makes it really easy for them to do that. I That's wonder, cool. yeah, because I w- like... It is, it is basically Unreal Engine uh, turned into a video game. Yeah. The, it would be interesting if it's like, because uh, when you, you were running across a bridge at one point, it was like this cobblestone bridge and it had like moss on it and stuff. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. I wonder if that bridge is a piece or if the cobblestones are a piece and you built a bridge. But then also if you could go, if an artist could go, okay, I'm going to make a tile set. And like, so this is my moss covered cobblestone tile. And then it goes through an approval process and then gets added to the store so that that library grows at the same time. Cause otherwise you are, like you said, you are going to hit that point where it's like, everything's everything. Thing. Like, I, I feel like I've just seen this game, yeah. But, yeah. but there's no reason why that couldn't happen except for potentially like a moderation issue. Yeah. I don't know that it has the like brilliant design tools of dreams, mm. but we even saw it in the halo community of like the forge mode became like all the custom maps were made with the same pieces of this forge map creator uh and then by halo 4 they were the dev team were building maps with forge and it's like these just look fucking like things that community made do something you've got like the t- the power to put textures on shit code and please do that it. instead yeah uh but um yeah i think it's really cool and it's free it is a, a thing you need to sign up for to get access to uh it is free and you probably saw there that in the menus is very much by aesthetic stuff yeah right. you'll bring your character into each of these game modes and want to look like the banana from Fortnite or whatever yeah i'm keen i, I want to jump in and try some of the back end stuff and see if like i can make a basic you know just you know pong or something like yeah totally. these characters and, and i want to you see. to do that as well yeah but <laughs> yeah. also just yeah because i'd love to come back and know how streamlined and how intuitive that ability because it's always going to be nerve-wracking to a degree but it looks like they've obviously made it in such a way that is going to be super accessible so yeah I'll yeah it's really like it was really uh i was pretty skeptical going into it uh, and I was really impressed by how it was all laid out and really easy to access and yeah, cool. how there were some fun things to play around with right out of the gate. So, yeah, it, yeah. if you're interested at all, go and download it for free. Uh, you have to sign up to Epic through Epic Store stuff. But, um, yeah, it's cool. Uh, and cool. I'm sure there's going to be some fun things that come out of this. Yeah, this is like a huge play for Epic. I'm gonna make the so yeah. back gonna be supporting set. this for a. You're gonna make the back pocket set. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah just try that. Space. That's my challenge. Yeah, and then just there's a Raj on the side that has a button that, <laughs> yes, and that just set. destroys. And you can't I would love it. to see what someone like you could do with a, a tool set like that because I remember even when I was first looking around in Dreams, you, you're so right. It's so overwhelming. You get in there and you have this big blank empty space, and it's like, okay, so I guess I'll. I'll make a floor. (laughs) (laughs) And then I'm done. Good floor. (laughs) That is so true. That is my feeling all the time. It's like, well, I... I've made a I've made a cube house, <laughs> and I guess I live here now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it's it, not for want of a great. There was a great tutorial showing you all these different things and stuff, but it's just like it is so cripplingly like overwhelming when you're just given an exp- an endless expanse of totally. nothingness. I mean, we had and, the and fortune like, now make something wonderful. Yeah, like, we had the fortune uh, of having uh, the developers come with the game in early access <laughs> yeah. five years ago. Designers of <laughs> like the content in the actual game. Yeah, and they would they spent hours building a couple of characters for us yeah like it's it was hard work Mm. yeah yeah really obviously the payoff was beautiful but it was yeah it was hard totally but uh they did say they they were like what would you like to make and we were like um a street (laughs) (laughs) yeah and we ended up making a street in gotham because it was like I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah totally. the game designer. And we put Jolene from uh, <laughs> Discord. Right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, y- yeah. you've tried to say something for 15 minutes. I have. Uh, Reese just suggested in the chat, 
should stream it and do the process of it because that's a great way to get through a couple of those sort of creative hurdles or roadblocks. Oh, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, crowdsource, yeah, crowdsource, crowdsource the yeah. design process great as idea. well. So, yeah, I might jump on and try and do that because that'd be fun to do with everyone. So I like it. I like it. Give it a whirl. Yep. Cool. Uh, uh, Peter. Yeah. Uh, that was just I, game one. I know. That was game one. And I'll be a little briefer on game two, but about a couple of hours cash. ago, I got a notification on my phone that Diablo Immortal is available to play right now. What a wild drop. <laughs> yeah, right. totally. Uh, the alpha uh, dropped for Android in Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd, I forgot that I'd actually signed up to, like, you know, put my name in the hat to be hopefully part of it. And I got into it, and <laughs> i got to say, the first 45 minutes is fucking great. You, you, <laughs> you're having a great time. You're making all those noises. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, yeah. And at like, one point, you loved it so much, you had to lie down because you were, like, overwhelmed <laughs> with joy. Uh, no, you were constantly going, shit, this is really cool. Yeah, I, I didn't know really what, what to expect. <laughs> That's um, not a phone or a tablet. No, that's no, 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 that's an iPhone 12 Mac. Yeah. <laughs> My friend's definitely that big. That's insane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's about accurate. Um, maybe they have really small hands. This is Donald yeah. Trump demonstrating. What <laughs> like. uh, okay. gotta have, yeah, he's gone now, but we can still have digs. We may still laugh. Um, it's like, it doesn't, it's not the most beautiful game. I mean, it's a mobile game and it doesn't run like super smoothly, but it is still alpha. But Everything else about it, I freaking loved. I rolled a wizard because wizards are the best. His name is Wizardo. Uh, and uh, it's like a dual thumbstick, uh, like virtual thumbstick game. You just run around with the left thumbstick and you get a bunch of abilities really quickly uh, that um, I'm sure barbarians like big AOE whirlwinds, swinging hammers and stuff. Um, but I got a bunch of really cool like fire spells and stuff. And we'll, you can jump in a fair bit because this is like super early, early. Um, and basically the tutorial lasted about 25 minutes, uh, and everything felt like it was really well designed for the mobile experience. Mm. Uh, all, all of my spells were fun to use, uh, moving around stuff was good. There's a good amount of auto aim with your basic attack. Yeah. And then there's a bunch of AOE, which is good because all you can really do is run around in circles with your left thumbstick. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you ve it's very much just about like kind of kiting and using your abilities in the right ways. Uh, and I didn't like misclick once. I always find that with virtual kind of totally. controls well, that I'm yeah. always hitting the wrong thing and it always felt good. Most of the spells are drag to aim, like my uh, skill shots are drag to aim. And I so. saw even there you had like a directional cone but with an AOE still. So it's like, it's, yeah. it's not, yeah, as you say, you don't miss directly. You're kind of like putting it in a direction with some splash effect around it kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and, and that was one of the many abilities. I leveled up really quickly. I think the um, alpha max level is 65 or something or 60, and I am I hit, like, 15 or 16 in, like, 40 minutes. So yeah, right. um, it really powers you through the start. It's got the hooks of the loot drop, man. Like, the things that I was like, oh, my God, when you guys were like, what? I was like, I just got a really cool piece of gear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's throwing really good bits of gear on early and... um. Yeah, like I see people talking about controller support. Um, I'm it, sure. I would, I would totally play this with the the uh, I have, backbone. Yeah. I don't have the backbone. I've got something else, but that's the kind of thing that I would totally. I just play. checked. It it uh, it will support controllers, and oh, yeah, great. at the moment it currently supports. I think the Xbox controllers. Because even I'm like, even I'm doing my little uh, Dual Shock with my funny mount on the back, and I'm totally used to now hooking a controller up to my mm -hmm. phone. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's not a foreign concept. I'm because got a bit for me, like the word the the word changed on this a few months ago because it was the like everyone remembers the way that it got announced at PAX but yep. then the, the uh, some BlizzCon. BlizzCon sorry BlizzCon yep. uh, but then some people got hands on a few months ago and they were like no 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 this thing's like actually legit and, and yeah. I don't remember that it was it was backlash because they thought they were going to announce a new Diablo and the one they did was, there was a mobile one there was a lot of teasing of a new Diablo is coming and people were like Diablo 4 sick yeah. and then it was like Diablo Immortal is a mobile thing and everyone was like oh that's a bit disappointing and then Blizzard said what you don't have mobile phones? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they were really <laughs> snarky about that's, it, and that's, that's what really it was like their people. mic drop moment, and then they doubled down. On yeah, it. yeah. yeah. Right. Um, but it, uh, yeah, the words started coming out that it was really cool for me. I, all these kind of dungeon crawler games, like I used to play them so much on my iPhone when the iPhone started like yeah. getting games, like those very yeah, right. first thing. Because it's not this is not the kind of game I sit down and play for five hours at my PC. It's something that I play for fifteen minutes while I'm watching TV. Yeah. So I am actually getting really and when you started playing it and i'm like i got super jealous <laughs> <laughs> well 
yeah, I mean, the great thing about how this has been built is that dungeons are, like, big dungeons are 15 minutes, maybe 20. Yeah, right. Normal dungeons are kind of one to seven minutes. Mm. So, it's very much a, oh, I'm playing on the bus kind of so thing. It's tailored for that kind of time. And, and Diablo itself is actually, I forget, I always get it mixed up sometimes thinking of your Baldur's Gate or your long sprawling d- divinity RPG and it's like they are actually moment to moment kind of little oh, dungeon yeah. areas. It is arcade like in that yeah, sense. They're, they're less they're less kind of story focused and more just like pushing through and getting the loot. Which means like, it's yeah, so then it's not a stretch to make these either a minute to seven to ten minutes, which yeah, yeah, yeah. shouldn't look nice. strange. But yeah, it yeah, look it looks great. It uh it's really fun playing the wizard, like I said. Uh and like there's so much to unlock. Um that I'll, I'll definitely keep playing through the alpha period, even though all the progress gets uh, wiped at the end of that, obviously. Mm. But uh, it's like it's really cool to be able to play a dungeon crawler like this on my phone. Someone asked if there's microtransactions. I don't think there's any in the alpha. I'm sure there will be in the game because it's going to be free to play. Sure. Uh, and um, how else are they going to make money off this? It's yep. very much like for... I mean, it's, you know, Diablo is a Western dungeon crawler, but they're, they're targeting a very big player base in China as well mm. and that's kind of like expected out of like the Tencent style game as well yeah. so yeah. I'm sure we'll see maybe some cosmetic stuff um, and you know they've they <laughs> we're not going to see another uh, real money auction house in, <laughs> in Diablo anytime soon so uh, they'll find ways to make to monetize this for sure. Oh, Path of Exile was all cosmetic um, microtransactions and like that did super well and people were like super keen yeah, like buy into all that. So totally, it, it's totally gonna have like because Diablo, like all these games, have the seasons and stuff. So I'm sure yep. they'll do like a season pass situation. The um, the, I'm just looking at info on this alpha. It's huge. Um, it's gonna last for a few weeks. Uh, you, they're gonna release new classes. There's two zones, and you have a level cap of 55. There's also battleground, which is an eight v. Uh, it's an eight match. PvP thing, hmm. and there's a 48 player raid. Wow. All in the alpha, it looks like. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The game's coming out sometime this year, so yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, very, very cool. Uh, alpha's looking really promising, uh, and I'm keen to play more. Neat. Um, the next thing I've played is a game that came out last year, but just hit, um, just hit Game Pass. And I saw it at the front of Game Pass and I'm like, this looks cute. Uh, and it is called Rain on Your Parade. Uh, and it is a, a little kind of overworld mini kind of puzzly thing where you are a cloud and you rain on stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. It's like you unlock progress by f- completing levels and they're like designed as little challenges, uh, like putting out fires or just soaking humans for the sake of being a mean cloud. Name another one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it actually did <laughs> Uh, <laughs> fill a cup. <laughs> There's a people very wet. You'd be, you <laughs> would one. be surprised. You would be surprised. Yeah, cool. There is a. I was very surprised when I came across a mission that was a Metal Gear Solid mission, nice. and ah. the idea was to sneak past all the guards to get to the end to unlock water to then go back and dampen everyone. But it was like, <laughs> <laughs> but oh no, I've been slightly dampened. <laughs> But the tone of it is all very cute. Yeah. yeah. A and weapon so to rival Metal Gear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, totally. totally. That's, uh, it's very cute looking. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's all like that cardboard art. You ruin a wedding is the first thing you do. By just <laughs> 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 so cool. Look at that face. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. Um, Terrible. And so, like, yeah, there, like there's not much to say about it other than it's really fun and it's free right now. Um, there is, you do pretty quickly unlock, and if you jump forward, maybe like a couple of, maybe five minutes or something will. Um, um, you do unlock the ability to... You get hats and stuff when you complete missions. Uh, I, uh, hats you, do anything? Hold more water? Uh, the hats don't do anything. It's all aesthetic. Okay. But you... On that same page... Is, maybe drop, skim... Just skim back together. on that cloud? Yes. So, in this room here... I can and see j- the jump back a, li- jump back a little bit more. Oh, wow. You can design your own face. <laughs> oh, Peter, Peter, Peter. Peter. <laughs> and so, of course, I started with a, uh, a hairy uh, Two cock. Two were born for each other. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, a big part of our early courtship was, was around I drawing remember. penises. Yeah. And so, I d- tried to hide the, um, the truly disgusting part of the penis, the head, uh, with a hat. <laughs> All right, we'll talk about that. The well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so I flew around as a as a flying phallus, Lovely. pink dick cloud with a hat. with a top hat. Yeah, Class. yeah. 
Uh, and yeah, I mean, I won't say any more about this game. Uh, if you're if you've got Game Pass, you, I I basically finished it in one sitting. Uh, it's very short and it's it's pretty fun the whole time. Yeah, this is dust. Like oh straight, God, out, straight out, straight out Counter Strike. It's yeah. like it's the map, and that's you've got great. to defend the bomb. So that's, it's like oh, that's fun. I, it was. It always found ways to do the same thing, but be surprising in the way sure. that did it. So oh. plus uh, little like in jokey, naughty things to gamers is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. I like that. Uh, and it's cloud. Any, any more that you see would just be a spoiler <laughs> because they're they're literally levels like this where you don't really move past sure. the the they're barrier little, of it. Yeah, right. There's a few that are bigger than one screen, but it's like this is it basically. I love how the soldiers run back wet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I clearly can't disarm a bomb now. <laughs> Very cool. And then the other thing that I played, we played together, Gus. And we it, did. It is uh, Zombie Army 4 Dead War. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, which you saw, it's, um, it's I think, free everywhere. It's Pretty also much. on Game Pass for PC and Xbox. Yep. It's PlayStation Plus this month as well mm -hmm. it's like it's hard to not see this game on your dashboard somewhere and you said you were keen to play it last week so i was like let's play it together and i was surprised when he said <laughs> let's play a game together so we did uh yeah we played this because it's predominantly uh, a co-op game um it is the sequel to zombie army trilogy which was obviously kind of the combination of all the spin-offs to the sniper elite series uh which oh, was the i've like yeah. i just have zero knowledge. it's it's a weird evolution about how this game came about because i love the sniper elite series i used to play the first one heaps and then got into uh, two, three, and two and three. Uh, just recently played two, sorry, three co op the whole way through. And it's the one with the slow mo bullets that go through the skull mm. and or testy pops and does yep. all that kind of stuff. And it's a great slow paced AI uh, juggling Hitman sort of big open worlds. Um, this is completely not that um, because they, <laughs> with those games, started doing zombie horde modes a la COD um, and they were pretty successful. So they bundled them together, did Zombie Army Trilogy. And then this uh, was the first one from the ground up. They decided to use the engine and then make uh, a co-op campaign and a horde mode. And I'm sure maybe a couple of other little like versions of it, but they're the two main ones. Uh, and yeah, I just love this engine. I don't love the engine. I actually hate this engine. Um, I hate the, the mo character movement and the aiming. And I particularly hate it when you're running around fast doing silly, you know, quick horde modes. Uh, but I do love the sniping and I love the gunplay. So yeah, I was keen to try check this out. So Pete and I ran through uh, one or two of the campaign missions, um, which are pretty which bare bones. Are, they're pretty bare bones and they're, they're structured like a Left 4 Dead. Yeah. Like you move through like i think three parts of individual uh maps Location. yeah like they're even the the left for dead in the same way that they've got like the poster for each one that's kind of like that cool horror movie it's a grindhouse like, kind of poster yeah. with the you know it's called like rails to hell and it's all around a <laughs> yeah, train right. station and look they're probably reusing a heap of assets from the um the game's uh engine so yeah we we ran through a train station there were like three areas there's waves that come through there's gear there's a lot of systems in it like you know there's upgrades there's heaps of uh skill trees and you're progressively upgrading your weapon and character to then carry through either more campaigns or the, that aforementioned horde mode so there's a cool it's nice the progression runs through every part of the game so it's like you can go hey what do you feel like playing tonight let's do another yeah. couple of waves um i would say i preferred the campaign in the sense that it does at least you do find yourself with a long range sniper rifle so there are elements oh, sorry there are stages where you're on a long train platform and the two of you are like long distance shooting a horde of zombies mm. coming towards you you're going for headshots um and oh, that's a nice hat peter wore a hat I found a nice hat. <laughs> <laughs> hats. Uh, and even though zombie headshots are less satisfying than Nazi headshots, yep. it's like there's so many of them. What if you... it was a Nazi who died and became a zombie? Uh, yeah. Take it in. Take it in. Because <laughs> it's like you would have wanted to get there first. Totally. Yeah, totally. Uh, but then the one thing I did really like, because it's, it is so gratuitous, but the slow-mo bullet cam shots that do go through the heads of the x-ray cams. <laughs> if you're playing co-op, occasionally you can have it turned on the frequency that if, say, Peter gets a really good headshot, the whole game goes on pause and we all watch <laughs> Peter's bullet. Go, awesome. yeah. And so we're on chat going like, oh, where's this one going to go? <laughs> so it's kind of a randomised thing when it actually a activates. Do you still get the whole x-ray everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and awesome. you watch Pete's one. We're all on chat, like, cheering him on. And then, you know, it's just uh, depends 
who gets the good shot from time to time. Yeah, it's great. The wave mode, the problem is the claustrophobia of it all. Like mm. it is these little channeled areas where. I was going to say, like this, or, this looks like it's been hacked in. This is a weird thing to say, and I've never played it before. It looks like it's built on the wrong engine. It does a bit. Yeah, like that's it kind just, of what it has this feeling where it's like I'm. That character is like an eighth of the screen and, and they're a bit the yeah they move a bit fast the, like we yeah. played with a mouse the keyboard weird. The, the field of view is weird yeah. Yeah. Like yeah the this, field of view is very yeah. strange yeah. yeah this game is great or the, the <laughs> Sniper Elite series is great to play I would say with a controller yeah. uh, on a console against AI in big areas where you you know you're taking a sniper rifle you're yeah. finding a perch and you're taking out targets running between close claustrophobic uh, corridors with a long-range rifle as they all get too close to you. Um, yeah, it's not as satisfying. I understand uh, that this is based on Sniper Elite and so the Sniper is a big part of it, but are there um, other guns that Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Just for those of us who aren't so great at sniping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if anything, the Sniper Rifle really isn't encouraged. There's, like, Tommy guns and trench oh, cool. guns and all oh, that great. kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's Something with a good spray, I Yeah, enjoy. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but they even, to the point, like, the game is counting up your combo there. Uh, you're unlocking uh, drops that then do uh, like weapon mods, like electricity and fire. So it is just like it's over the top to the you mm. know the max. There's uh, bigger bosses that come through at the end of the waves with like flamethrowers and all that stuff. Yeah, we did have fun. Like I guess there you go. There's a double shot. Those ones are actually playing in real time just for the, that person. So occasionally you're seeing an X-ray cam just quickly of your kill. Yeah, right. No one else saw that one. So you still get a bit of a taste of it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the most fun we had was probably just in the sewers at the start, discovering it and kind of panicking and not knowing how many waves were coming in that sort of thing and having that <laughs> yeah. left for dead panic. Um, but again, once we went through another one of these maps, I think the novelty had started to wear thin. Yeah, I mean, I, I would probably I played again. play through the campaign before I play more Horde, just yeah. because it because you feel like you're accomplishing something. You horde that. modes don't do much for me because it's just like, oh, we survived X amount of waves. Yeah. Uh, but when you finish a campaign, it's like, I could finish this game and then I could put it down. It did like, have that interesting point where um, the Horde mode does have moments where kind of like x fill and Outbreak, you can go, hey, let's choose to get out now. Mm -hmm. So after I think 10 waves where like a door's open and I assume we could have played on possibly. Maybe yeah, we, we got pretty hard. Door. It was like get to the exit kind of thing. Uh, and so we ran up to an exit door at the back and kind of thought like, I was panicking and I was like, Peter, let's leave. And he was <laughs> like, I think everything's fine. And I don't know if we've got the clip there somewhere we can probably scrub, but uh, this... Yeah. Yeah, huge, right massive, like, black creature with right tendrils end, came, like, running up the floor, and Pete yeah. didn't know it was there. Oh, no. Also, he got, like, a heavy armor, um, zombies and stuff like that, and we're using oh, yeah. more traditional weapons. But, yeah, basically, right at the end, I decide to make a break for it, and, uh, yeah, the door opens here, and we're like, great, let's just get out of here. Uh, and I found myself swamped by this terrifying creature that lifted me up and started, like, pulling me apart, while Peter was like... It's fine. We can keep going. We'll be okay. I was like, we can just keep like farming points here and get like experience and stuff. Yeah. So we legged it and did survive. <laughs> but uh, I, I like that there is at least the idea of that saying like it can be endless or you can choose to yeah. keep going. Here yeah, that thing, that, oh, thing, that thing. That thing can fuck right that was oh, not That's a like a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. And look, it, it, it basically grabs me and starts sort of. So I think that's there basically like you should probably <laughs> leave no, the game. Oh, oh, oh shit. Oh, it turns oh. into a Nazi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. You thought it wasn't scary enough. It turns into a Nazi. Uh, wow. <laughs> this demon nightmare has uh, like very conservative views. <laughs> scary. But um, there's, yeah, as you're saying, Pete, like there's heaps of there's replayability. There's all these ranks and scores, and there were weekly events and stuff. So yeah, totally. I think the thing that I found that was missing from this that I really enjoyed in Sniper was daytime Tunisia. Like big bright maps yeah. and really slowly starting. Mm. Everything's happening very quickly in this zombie game, mm. whereas opposed to like going to try and find the position to get the sniper shot to finish the map was the interesting part about the sniper game because the engine again isn't really fun to run around and be like mm. action man in as much as it is like getting that sniper bullet slow mo cam. So and lining I, yourself up for that is the. Fun. I feel like a lot it's of not here. Uh, an argument against that could be people saying, well, it's a zombie game. It has to take place at night. has to be all that. Oh, my God, they just keep coming. I think daytime zombies are still scary. Daytime zombies I agree scary. entirely. Um, and Outbreak on COD is a really say. good uh, test, like sort of proof of concept of that, that the daytime maps, you can start them at your own pace. The map is peppered, littered with zombies that you're like, all right, I'm going to get a sniper rifle out and choose to, you know, take them all on before waves come at you. So, yeah, I'd love to see the next zombie army 
dead for land war uh number five be yeah maybe taking that actual game and then you know having the zombies mm. all enjoying a sunny day in tuscany or tunisia yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying they deserve it they do they the deserve zombies it. not the nazis italians can be zombies too <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was fun it was they fun certainly to- could be nazis too Tina, it was also lovely to play with you again we should do it more that was fun yeah. it was good fun uh, what else have you been playing? Uh, and then the other game I've been playing this week was uh, MLB The Show, which is, we talked about on the news, has been released uh, for both Xbox uh, and PlayStation. This, of course, being uh, a Sony Studios game that has been purchased and now is playable and is free because it's on Game Pass. Uh, so I downloaded this to give it a shot. I've never actually played a baseball game outside of your really early arcade ones, uh, so no simulators or anything like that. But I decided that I'd give this a red hot crack because I want wanted to get into it. I like the idea of baseball. I think it's a cool... You like the idea of hot dogs and nacho cheese. I do, hats. I do. So, I I, in America been, that he grew up in. <laughs> when I've been scouring the sports for the sport that might grab me, I was like, maybe baseball. And yeah. someone told me how long games go for, and I was like, oh, no. I've heard everyone says, you know, anyone who goes to the States to watch a game, they're like, it went longer than cricket. It was boring, it went on, yeah. that sort of thing. But I thought as a game, you know, it might be a fun thing to dive into. And, yeah, there is a lot to get your head around. First and foremost, booting up an Xbox with the PlayStation logo or the, like, the Sony Studios <laughs> thing at the start. Start is a very weird feeling. Oh, so yeah. I, so I've been playing this as well. Yes. Um, when I booted it up, it has the Sony logo and uh, the PlayStation Studios thing, and then it has that Marvel style Blue Sony X logo the with all the game. Ah. But yeah, right. I swear, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. when I play like Horizon and that comes up, or Last of Us. Multiple games come yes. up in that. Yes, it's just whereas a- this just has MLB shots from the game that you're playing come up in it because uh-huh. they're like, on the, yeah. you might get this game, but there's no fucking universe where you get Joel and Ellie on a PlayStation. <laughs> well, no yeah, Jack yeah, and Dexter, yeah. where are yeah. coming from? Did you play it on your Xbox as well? Yep. <clears throat> so I, w- I wonder if they have. I'm sure it's the other one. It's the other yeah. one the on the PlayStation. Side out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I jumped into this and, uh, as expected, was immediately overwhelmed by. I would say less about the rule set and the options for how the game is played, uh, in terms of you can play with like less stoppages and more of an arcadey kind of vibe. The tricky thing to get your head around here is that every aspect of the game has, I think, three or four contro- optional control methods. So, many. so you're batting, you're pitching, you're fielding. Uh, and you're running, I guess, your base running. Uh, the start of the game says, hey, which of the four controller modes do you want for batting? Do you want thumbstick control? Do you want button timed control? Do you want oh trigger and a, a, sort of full an area, analog. full yeah. analog and all that? And you go, oh, this is batting timed button press, please. And it goes, okay, cool. Is there so, a button that, that is just auto? No, 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 no. <laughs> which there is for fielding. Oh, okay. Yeah, fielding, right, you fielding does. Yeah. Just catch it, please. But um, <laughs> That's called watching baseball. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you go through all those and you have to pick one you like. The tricky thing is there's no real tutorial for it. It's more just like, hey, try this one out quickly. Do you like it? And I'm like, I might like it now. I don't know how this is going to feel. Yeah, it was funny a long game. doing it. And going like, oh, well, I don't know how this feels yet. Like, like I don't even know how to play this game yet. I was going to say, that was like, some- what, what specific mini game would you like to play within the game? Yeah. Every time you start getting, I was play, like, like uh, run me through again how this will start. Like, how many outs do I get before it's an innings and all that sort of stuff. So, I'm sure that is there. I just went straight into some exhibition games. I picked my team. I'm the Boston Red Sox. I play from Boston because yep. why not? Yeah, sure. It's just, what's, are they a good team? Yeah, they're fine. They won a few World Series, I saw. They're pretty bad. Yep. <gasps> Not in. They have oh Red Sox haven't Blast won in. Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> but even I know that. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, um, and I played two full games. Uh, they do go on, but I sort of picked the... Uh, they do go on. They do really go on. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed it. I Again, that's probably... I've heard a lot of reviews and things comparing it, obviously, to previous uh, years of this game, and they say there's not too much that it brings revolutionary to the formula. Um, but again, for someone who's not played it and is wrapping my head around a lot of the minutiae of the controls mm-hmm. in the game. Um, yeah, I, I'm finding that really fun and I'm going to continue. There's a lot on screen that I might watch a YouTube video or two, I think, just to <laughs> even just yeah, boil right. down some of the... Even you're seeing here when... Um, you pitch it and there's a strike or even a hit. You see down the bottom left kind of like a, a heat map of 
well, you're not now, but a heat map of where it swung and where it yeah. hit. And so there's so much in terms of like the technical levels. Uh, there's even like, I think when you're batting, you can predict which way you think it's going to go. It's wild. It's cool. But, and I did it once and it goes like, if you predict it right, you get this little indicator that you nailed it. And if you get this hit, you're going to absolutely wallop it. So there's like, I like how they've found gameplay with cool. these basic, not just like press the button a few times to bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's in every aspect of it. And I panic when it goes out and I have my bases loaded and I'm like, oh, why to send that runner? And I really liked the... Because this is the first time I've played the show. Like, I watch a bit of baseball. I have baseball. Like, I watch... I fall asleep to baseball. I have it on the background sometimes. Like, I, I like the athletics. I like watching... Like, I know enough about baseball to follow it and stuff. But I've never played a game like this. Um... The bases loaded thing is cool where you control runners with the left and right trigger of like left trigger, left bumper is like encourage your runners to go and right bumper is like send everybody back and stuff. And so it's like while you're hitting, uh, uh, you're, 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 what, you're, 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 yeah, they're doing that in their field. Yeah, yeah cool. so that's cool. I think the thing for me, the weird thing about this, because baseball is a very slow game. It's a very long game. It's a game of technicalities. And I've been thinking about it today of like, I... I think I'll play this again, but I wasn't really having fun playing it. Um, and I think it's because in most sports games, uh, it's it's moment to moment stuff that you're controlling that's really fun. And in this, much much like real baseball, it's kind of like a bunch of okay, we've all agreed what we're going to do. Like you know the ball you're going to throw. You know, like you've set everything up, and then you hit a button, and then it kind of just happens. Mm. And then there's no real action. There's not a huge amount of action that happens afterwards. Like if you're batting, you kind of choose to run to the bases or not run to the bases. Whereas if you're playing FIFA, it's like you're constantly making these decisions of like pass, yeah. pass, kick, go for a goal, whatever, whatever. Whereas this is a lot of setup, execute, and then sort of see what happens as opposed to like yeah, I fine control i felt because like when i was doing the fielding it's just like run to the spot did i make it and then like generally and of course i'm being massively reductive but generally throw one base ahead of yeah. like where the run is going to go and then when i'm running it's like just run conservative like and so it felt like it's it is there's just tons of downtime in this game more so than something even like nfl mm. um where at least yeah. once the once the play has happened, like once you have gone, okay, I know that I'm going to do like a, like a, um, uh, I'm going to rush, like I'm going to rush and run instead of like passing or something. Yeah. It's like, I've agreed on that move and now I need to execute that move. And now all the other people are doing something and I can like continue to run and like, isn't it, isn't it funny how like all American sports are built around the idea of where they can fit ads in? Oh, yeah, it's like, they're all so awful stuff. to watch wow. because of that. It's like, okay, yeah. I'd love <laughs> let's to all like, have a breather so we can watch. It's almost like I'd love Hemorrhoid this came with uh, like little league as a mini game on the side, which is just no downtime. And it's just like, <laughs> well, hit, run, yeah. hit, run, change, hit, run. Yeah. Like play as an overbearing father, father with a handicap. <laughs> <laughs> so, to me, it sounds like this series has gone, has become more and more a sim, uh, which makes it less fun to play unless you're super, you've been playing them oh, for totally. years because you know, the, like, you know, the minutia of how each of these systems mm. works and it's fun to be good at that, but learning it from scratch is fucked. Okay. I would, it I, would be cool if there was a paired back mode that made it more it fun to maybe, play. There, 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 there is a, there is a um, career mode where you basically can do like, you start in, you start in the, um, uh, lower leagues sure. and work your way up sort of thing it's not exactly the same the, yeah. the one and then you can do your thing the one thing that i okay. that i well I, you were gonna make excellent points um but the one thing that is in this that i thought was really cool is you can replay moments of uh baseball stuff that have happened in real life recently mm. okay like cool a couple of weeks ago uh the ken griffey uh, jr of course yeah that's all drank Babe Ruth. syrup and got a massive head <laughs> um no a couple of weeks ago the Keith padres <laughs> pitcher um, there's no crying in baseball <laughs> uh the padres uh pitcher threw a no hitter game and it's like the like the, the only third time that's happened in that franchise's history huge moment in sport like two weeks ago and you that was just two weeks ago it. and you now get to like do that in the game where can you throw a no hit game that's cool. that, yeah, like, okay. that sort of thing is for me I feel like if I'm going to go back to it I'm probably going to go back to that like that's a have cool an awesome thing moment to, thing yeah, as opposed that's to, a cool thing to sit next to 
being a fan of the sport and having a reason yeah. to bounce between the two things. What I would say to what you were mentioning before, Pete, I, uh, I'm on the flip side of that in the sense that I actually am, the thing I'm enjoying right now is learning all the mechanics for the first time. I suck at it, mm. so uh, it's less of that set all the pins up and knock them down for me. It's like... It's hit. Ah, oh, I'm fielding. Um, ah, uh, it's like, ah, uh, quick, why? To go to that base. Like, it's, I'm learning it and I'm not good at it and I'm not remembering it. So it's actually, that's moment to moment fun yeah, for okay. me. Once I get good at it, I'll probably stop playing. Or once I even get down <laughs> pat with it all, I'll be like, yeah. okay, now I can see all the numbers. Now I have to follow the stats and play yeah. the long game. And that's for me uh, and my short little attention span far less entertaining from what it is right now, which is just hit a home run, hit a home run, hit a home oh, run, three strikes, I'm out. Yeah, and okay. that kind of thing. I think as well, like baseball is a difficult sport uh, to play as a game in this kind of way because most other sports you uh, when you're playing like offense or whatever you end up with the ball like football when you get the ball it's like okay run with the ball at your feet NFL throw the ball golf hit the ball this is stand there and a ball is going to fly at your face and like can you time the timing of the batting took me ages to get down thing it's not like oh i can get home run and it's literally it's literally like I, I hit the button and it's like and and the indicator down the bottom left is way too early. It's and then <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, I'll do it a fraction of a second later. And I literally I'm a, literally a fraction of a second later. And it's like far too late. The sliver <laughs> to get it in is a sliver. It's, it's not, so here's, tight. Here's your sweet spot. So I like that. I want to get good enough at that. I want to learn it so I'm like I know what I'm pitching correctly. I know how I'm fielding and loading up the bases. But th- yeah, this is not my sport. This is not something I'm going to. It, the fact that it is free on Game Pass is why I am playing it. I would not have sunk cash in <laughs> to get good at baseball. So, but yeah. as a sim, it seems like in terms of like the realism is off the charts. Yeah. It just it just in terms of like the whole flow of the game is totally perfect. The only thing I have heard is that people have said that the uh, DualSense wireless controller feedback is fantastic for it. And that's obviously what you're not getting yeah, with the Xbox right. One. You've got to pay your $90 to play that. Uh, and it's one of those things, I'd love to try it and go, oh, that's what it feels like to hit a ball with a controller. I never, with a DualSense, I'm never going to do that again. So yeah, Steph, your turn, finally. Like, what do you think of the game? What do you think of, <laughs> do you think of Boston? Let's talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, that's what I've been playing. Um, cool. Me? You? Uh, I've been playing <laughs> Borderlands 3 this week because um, uh, I'd never played it. And I kind of thought that I had, but I played Borderlands 2, I think, a long, long time ago. Fair enough. You were playing that a couple of weeks ago? Kind of yeah, I didn't yeah. like it. Deleted it from my brain, maybe? Was, I don't know. I just, did you play the, the Aussie one? The pre-sequel? The pre-sequel, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember There's the a lot Bogan of Ella and, same. and I stuff like that. I played all the other Borderlands stuff and I just never picked up three. No, yeah, no. and I also just like, I just can't remember anything from them. So I feel like I had to sort of start relearning everything from scratch. So it was actually quite good to play it on stream because I had a lot of people were helping me navigate the menus and stuff because there's a lot of weird menus in that game. Mm. Um, and it was cool. It was fun. I really, I really enjoy the kind of um, chaotic like no rules aspect to it. I had one of the guns I picked up that I kind of used for most of my playthrough. Um, Every time you reload it, it just throws a gun, like a copy of itself at an enemy. And then (laughs) you can shoot the gun and it explodes, like detonates. Yeah, right. So like every time you reload it, it just goes. And then it also says, ow, 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 when it like Good. bounces. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was really, it was really weird, interesting mechanic because you'd be shooting something and then it would just kind of propel an explosive forward. And then you had to shoot that once it hit the right spot. And it was kind of like, I don't know, mixed up, <laughs> mixed things up for me in a really, really cool way. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of fun co-op. I would say though that there's like, I had no idea what was going on in the story. Mm. Like, Two twin, no idea. Two crazy it was just like a lot of people yeah. yelling. Pandora yeah, a lot yeah, of people yelling of all characters. the time. It was really hard to follow what was going on. I mean, I was talking a lot, but it's a co-op game. <laughs> you do talk. So yeah. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. We were trying yeah. to kind of. Le- I was trying to learn it, and like, there's four different skill trees that you can be specking at any one time, and mm. and pulling sort of skills across from each of those, and. So it was really difficult to follow the story and I kind of didn't really care because what I enjoyed about it was just the looter shooter aspect sure. of like being with friends and weird guns and stuff. Yeah. I would also say though that it was really difficult to distinguish the enemies from my teammates. Yeah. <laughs> like everyone yeah. kind of looked the same. There's no and, it's, and because it's all very kind of brown and cell shaded it's just like I don't know. It doesn't do a great job of, of helping. I don't know if I'm, it's just my eyes are just getting shitty, but everyone sort of that I was playing with. You're coming off the great. back of, you're now playing shooters. You're playing co-op shooters. You're like, you're loving them. And that is no surprise coming off the back of <laughs> destiny, which I think, yeah, has a far better 
um, design style to <clears throat> help those things in terms of story, in, her, yeah. in terms of play indicators and enemy indicators and all that kind of stuff. I, yeah, I totally think all those criticisms are totally valid, especially off the back of playing so much of a game like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was playing with um, Shadamar. I was playing with Vexia. I was playing with Reese. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we all kind of struggled with the same things in terms of trying to identify what was happening and. Um, you know, it was a really good game. Was to be. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you're so confused right now. <laughs> I was like, what is this? <laughs> How many trees are there? How many arms do I have? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but it was fun. The other thing I would say, like, just, you know, talking about Destiny, I feel like I've played so much Destiny now that, like, the shooting in this just feels super unsatisfying. Yeah. yeah. Like, I really so love tough, the crazy yeah. guns and I love the kind of creativity or that they've just gone with creating guns that do all these different crazy things but um the actual shooting no matter which gun i picked up just never felt really like super satisfying. i just feel like yeah. i feel like bungie and like treyarch raven uh um sledgehammer should both of the companies should just be like we're licensing out the shooting to yep. all other we'll games. We'll cover that, yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, it is, it's so, like, yeah, I, I remember <laughs> playing Borderlands and being like, oh, yeah, it just doesn't have that snappy feel that Nothing something like it's hard enough. Is. Everything yeah. just feels yeah. Like papery and, yeah, no. But, I yeah, I mean, even, like, because it's, it, it's like hit scanny kind of shooting and there's fun, weird, dumb guns in it and stuff. It doesn't need to be snappy like COD and... Uh, and Destiny mm. or Halo or anything yeah. like that. It just needs to feel good. Mm. And, like, that's down to hit sounds and it's down to, like, so <laughs> many things. And it's just... Bad. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little lost here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it just, it, yeah, it doesn't have the impact. And and I think part of that as well as visually, was it was a really striking thing when Borderlands first came out, this cel-shaded look. And now it just feels really muddy. And I don't know if it's, like, there's more detail yeah. in the textures that makes everything look, like, like mash. Like I, they have I find it. I, I got like for starters, I got really bored really quickly because I think it's actually quite a bad game. It's like yeah, it's, the only thing in the game is find a new gun and you'll have fun. But and it's like, well, I haven't found like, a new gun I, in ten I minutes. Feel so like I'm I bored. spent so much time. Like it took us so long to progress anywhere because, like, you pick up so many guns and then you're just kind of having to go through and compare and look at all of them. Like it was, it was, it was there was just too much stuff all and the time. Spending, to constantly, uh, you're doing that with other people. So you're like, hey guys, Everyone's, I'm in a menu yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm still sorting out my uh, my loot. Yeah. I was going to say that's like that's that's the big thing for me. I feel like um, post Destiny. It, it, it happened before, but I think I feel like Destiny really solidified this idea of like that those legendary, iconic, named weapons as yeah. being uh, something that you're hunting for is is more appealing to me than r r rolling a gun that's one of 130 million potential mm. like uh, rolls that you could get of a weapon that all, like you said, just have the smallest tweaks. Like, the, and Destiny does that stuff, but yeah. it, but it, the idea is like, oh, you can roll uh, this iconic gun with these little modifiers and you get the perfect version of it. And I think that that feeling, even though you do get the cool stuff of like, it's a gun that shoots itself and then you can shoot it and it blows up. It's a novelty. And that's awesome. But it, it I th a lot of the space in between that is like, doesn't feel authored. It just feels like numbers that get thrown at you and you need to make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. just felt like a uh, quantity over quality, really. And I feel like, um, it, yeah, there could, there's a lot of like fat that could be cut from this game to make it better. In saying that, I still do want to keep playing it because I feel like I spent the whole stream just tr trying to figure it out and also um, figure try and see if I was shooting at the right things <laughs> like it's so it was so hard to, especially then once you're playing with uh, we were in a you know four player party but then you have like NPCs who join you as well who are like right. let's go get this thing together so I'm like oh shit that's our friend you know that I'm shooting at and then I spend so much time aiming down sights and trying to make sure that I'm about to shoot the right thing before I shoot it mm. that it just feels it doesn't I don't feel cool when I'm doing it yeah. I just, yeah, right. I'm like I, uh, yes okay I, I think that was right <laughs> like yeah. make a good point also about the um especially the one thing that i never really gelled with the borderlands games was that writing was the characters all that shouty kind of exposition yeah and it's an interesting thing that they clearly haven't taken into account the fact that this is meant to be played co-op with four other people mm. and so you find yourself in one of the things that really gets my goat which is trying to either listen to characters talking while you're all talking together because i prefer to chat with my party and work out what's going on and npcs talking in the second that 
all just starts crossing over. At least, again, using something like a Destiny as an example, is you've got little moments of little, a quick little dialogue line here and there, but nothing that's like mm. a five minute speech by a character. And then yeah. when you do need that, you're all at a hub or you're it's a cut scene because yeah. here or it's have, like hiding, loading. Yes, but having characters scream, "All right, guys, we're gonna go down!" And then your yeah, friends yeah. are like, "Has anyone got their guns ready?" I start to have an, a panic attack. I'm like, yeah. "There's too much." Yeah. And this game and the series has always done that for me. It's it like really it, painful. It just feels like it. It. it it sort of burst onto the scene with something that felt really new and unique, but it hasn't evolved across the, like, mm. you know, many sequels that it's had. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I just want to go play Rage 2. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. No one's ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'll keep Why, playing, I'll the, keep playing it. Thing. I put them together and I then look at that and go, Rage 2 looks cool and more fun than that. Yeah, at least Rage was, like, more focused than Borderlands, I think. I think I, I've, I've played Rage and I feel like I prefer this to that. But, like, yeah, I, I'll keep playing it. But um, oh. I'm sort of hoping that I, I get more comfortable with it as... I progress. I it's really. Course, oh, sorry. You go, Pete. I was just going to say, I really enjoyed my first session with it. And the moment I jumped back into my second session with it with the guys, we were like, is this all there is to this yeah, game? Yeah, right. <laughs> That's where we realized that, oh, fuck, we don't actually want to spend 50 hours doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. Yeah. yeah. Mm, well. And so this is this was the game that emotionally devastated you before we started the show. It was not. It was not. I've also <laughs> been playing um, Emily is Away less than three. Is that a heart? Because um, it's a bad heart. Uh, the first Emily is away uh, uh, is just called Emily is away. Then this Emily is away two, and then this is Emily is away three. But it's like done with a little. It's stylized with the Oticon three. ASCII, yeah, ASCII, ASCII three. Um, so Emily is away. If you don't, if you're not familiar with the series, I've streamed. I think both Emily is away and Emily is away two, and um, everyone was right there with me in the sort of anxiety, and quite recently as well. Um, because I just love them. I think they're amazing. It's like an instant messenger role play game. And the first, the first two are kind of set around the time of, um, uh, I would say for, I would say for us here, more MSN messenger. Messenger. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, in the States and I had, I had, um, aim as well. It was like the AOL kind of instant messenger service and they called it aim. Um, and you are kind of navigating high school friendships and relationships and sort of, talking to multiple different friends at the same time. You're um, expressing yourself through your like away message with song lyrics and quotes and stuff. And so and your political uncle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your, aunt, your aunt Karen is in there. Um, yeah. yeah. And you would always, you know, it was, it's, it's really taps into that wonderful nostalgia of like when you were a teenager. Um, this is the first two, by the way. Um, and you were kind of, choosing your profile picture mm. based on the band that you liked and you'd have song lyrics in, in your name and stuff. And, um, yeah, they were really incredible games that, that were um, very cleverly done to make you feel like you were pursuing a relationship with someone, whether that's romantic or friendship or, or whatever. Um, so Emily is away less than three is now it's 2008. <laughs> You can just say three. Okay. <laughs> it's just a, yeah. It's just because I feel like it's confusing. You should like when you, you want to make sure that you're getting the right one. It's 2008. Facebook has started. Aim is dead. And you're in your final year of high school and sort of navigating what you're going to do. Friendships, college, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. It is amazing as an experience because it does take you back to, I mean, these games are so beautifully rooted in nostalgia, but like Facebook starting is still relatively recent for all of us. Like yeah. the start of social media, 2008 doesn't feel like it was that long ago, but as soon as like I booted this up, it was like, I started talking to someone on instant messages like, Oh my God, you finally make a Facebook profile. And they're like, Hey, I'm making a playlist for my friend. Listen to this song. And this is something that they introduced in Emily as a way too, where um, when someone sends you a link, when I say someone, an NPC sends you a link in an instant messenger, you click on it and it basically opens up your web browser mm. and populates like a, a fake version of that, of that web Wait, page. Your web browser? You, yes, Steph? My real so web browser. So yeah. Chrome oh, opens wow. up. Chrome opens up. Oh, wow. That's up, and awesome. And it takes you to YouTube, T-O-O-B, and they've just created like a facsimile of what YouTube looks like. And they've kind of- In been, 2008. In 2008 and embedded like- videos in there Amazing. from that time so and it instantly it was like i had not been in the game for more than like a, a minute and i clicked on this link and it it put this song up that was called um don't trust me by a band called 303 mm -hmm. which is like 
I sat and watched it and I remembered this song <laughs> and I remember loving it and it is the shittest song ever and they are the shittest people, the shittest band. <laughs> they are the shittest people. Oh my God. People. Yes, everything about it was Looking just so right shit and problematic uh, and awful. Wow. And I feel like, Nick, you are the only person who will kind of potentially relate to this because they have very much captured a very emo like point in my life and I was so in there. Steph, I'm there, still in that point. And there were so, there were, there were like there, they are, don't trust me. There are references to song lyrics from from like really like nerdy emo bands and stuff that like I'm not talking about like My Chem or like you know Paramore or whatever but like Jack's Mannequin and something yeah, yeah, corporate yeah. and stuff yeah. like that like really like lyrics that I would see someone had written on their profile and I was like oh my god it's like this game was made to recreate my I remember experience. that from the first one as being like there was stuff because we played it on pocket and yeah. Yeah, stuff yeah. in there where I was just like fuck so real fuck they know. I they know everything. Like, <laughs> I feel like I sat there, and because I hadn't thought about that song in so long, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was instantly <laughs> transported to me with like long black hair extension hair with like coloured stripes in them and a nose ring at the fucking Soundwave concert, and yep. just the worst memories of myself. <laughs> and I was watching it, and I was like, "Oh God." <laughs> anyway, you kind of go through um, the way the game's set up every single time is it puts you into situations where you're having multiple conversations with people. And you're trying to kind of um, navigate the changing nature of friendships, but also there'll be things like somebody will tell you something in confidence and mm. be like, please don't tell anyone this. And you're like, no, of course, it's just between us. They tell you the thing. You're like, that's fine. I can keep it a secret. But then in your conversations with other people, never keep it a secret. they'll never. be like, they'll confess something to you that you're like, oh, fuck, this information is like, it's kind of important that they know this now. So then you have to decide whether you're going to betray their trust yep. or, you know, not tell this person and, and, you know, then they'll like get into trouble as a result. And then you kind of like... At, at one point, you know, you're pers I was pursuing a relationship with Emily. I decided because it's sort of presented with two girls at the start and like I was like, Emily, I feel like I gelled more with her. So I'm just going to stay friends with this one. And Emily and I get into this really deep relationship and it's going really well. And then one of my other friends is like, hey, I don't know if you've seen like Emily posting on this guy, Jeff Swall. And I was like, oh, yeah, Jeff. She mentioned him from like her uni classes or whatever, they're just friends. And they're like, I don't know, man. Have you seen the stuff that like she's been posting on as well? And I was like, well, I sent him a friend request, but he hasn't accepted it. <gasps> and they're like, oh, okay. Well, he's friends with me and the they're like flirting pretty hard. And I'm like, well, what are they saying? He's like, I don't know. Like, do you want, like, do you want me to send you a screenshot? And I was like, yes. And then I, he was like, oh no, wait, I know. Why don't you just log in with as my profile as me? And then you can like see all the stuff they're doing. And I was like, no, that's like super deceitful and dodgy. I don't want to do that. And he's like, you should do it. And then it's like, he doesn't give you an option to not yeah, do it. Yeah. Wow. And then it's like, oh, Jeff's online. You could like talk to him and pretend to be me. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> and plus I was seeing the stuff she was posting on there. Pretty flirty. Pretty flirty. Oh, you're getting dumb. <laughs> oh, Emily. I was, I was just like trying to make all the right decisions and stuff. But now I'm like, I'm fully like, she's, she was so into me, man. And I was like, the, no one could be that into me and like, and be, che and, and be cheating some on me at the same time. Like, I just don't I believe that she would do that to oh, me. But now she's starting to get really distant and like high school is ending. And I feel like she's about to break up with me. <laughs> and I don't want her to because we, what we have is pure and real. So you're like, you're like, <laughs> oh, all right, I've loved. Did. I'm doing this. I need to put on some fucking red jumpsuit apparatus face down and oh my just like, God, <laughs> like so have this funny. conversation. And this is the thing. Like you can play this game and you will have a really incredible experience even if you don't have any connection to that kind of music. But if you do, <laughs> it does so much more to ground you back in that time totally. and that level of maturity and the angst and the drama and all of the long fucking text messages that you would have with people because that's just like... Easier well, to communicate so, so that way. I was gonna, then. Yeah, because like, let me tell you about a little band called Hawthorne Heights. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it's actually like, I was thinking about um, my time when I was using something like MSN Messenger, and I could be off base because I'm not as I'm not um, like I don't do that sort of like I don't really chat to friends. I don't sit down at night and chat to friends all the time mm. like I used to. But I feel like now something like Discord and just multiplayer gaming and stuff has pushed us towards group conversations. Mm. Like it's yeah. about sharing mm. spaces with a group of friends and you obviously you can have individual conversations, but like m more like hanging out as friends in a m sort of private public space. Whereas Messenger was so definitive in a life because it was like you would sit down to do that, yeah. Yeah. and then you would and not like only, you, but you would do it with right. like seven people, and so that idea of going, oh, we're having a really deep 
conversation here. Don't tell anyone. You're like, no, 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 I never would. And then you're like, I'm having a really deep conversation over here. Yeah. And then the yeah. Alex, and she's saying some shit that I really think you need to know it. And it's like, but because you're having seven conversations at once and you're trying to like socially navigate that, but they're all these silos, but all of you- They're all talking to other people as well to naively think that, oh, I'm the one talking to totally. them all, and they're not all talking to each other. Totally. Yeah. That's how you feel when you did it. You're like, I never did it when I was sitting down. I was never like, I'm going to put on a movie and listen to message. No, it was no, like, no, like, I'm going to put on some it. music and spend five hours but on um, MSN. But it was also that thing that, like, that, yep, that yep. kind of like- nervousness when suddenly someone came online and it was just like are they going to be the first person to like say hello to me totally. am I going to reach out to them and then it was like then they kind of like go on like away and then they have like their away messages just like something really fucking emo and it's like oh no they're going through something I should probably talk to them about it but then you're like I don't know if they want me to bring it up like maybe I'll just talk to them casually and then maybe they'll bring it the up social infrastructure <laughs> that was contained in something that was like this tall and skinny like it was like just it, it, like that space I I I like my favorite thing in the world is having like really deep conversations with my friends. Mm. And I realized that like messenger was also that thing where it was like, you had your friends in real life. And then you also had your friends in real life on messenger mm. where it's like, what we talk about here, we're not going to talk about tomorrow we never at school. Would, yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. just going to talk about it here. Totally. So we're going to be completely uh, unabashedly shamelessly real <laughs> on this. And then tomorrow at school, I'm going to be like, Hey Dave, what's up? <laughs> and it was and it was amazing because I remember like because I'm old, you know, I remember a time before all of that and you would just talk on the phone for hours to people. Yeah, like, yeah, late yeah. At oh, night. yeah. You'd have the and mom would be like, get off the phone. And I'd be like, no, it's five more minutes. And it'd be like 25 minutes later, I'd be like, Yeah, so I don't know. What are you doing later? And then my friend would like play guitar and stuff, and then we'd like watch TV together and stuff, and it was just like long conversations. And you're and paying then- for those phone calls back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I was talking about that recently. Yeah. Like, I forgot that. But then yeah. an instant messenger happened and it was like I guess like the idea of talking on the phone with someone, you're removing the face-to-face thing so people feel like they could be more forthcoming. Mm. Then when you got to instant messenger, it was like you didn't have face or voice. Or voice. You could hide just behind totally different kind written of word. And then people's relationships changed then also because they felt like they could they could be more um, candid while hiding behind. You could be also. You could also vet what you were saying, and you could yes. also plan out mm. and yeah. think of the response. You're not it was the original dot 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 dot. Yeah, like so, yeah, so yeah. and so is writing. And, totally. then, and then like you, you could even see. I think um, you know deleting. It does that a lot. It, it's a really clever oh, device. That show that they do, the, yeah, I remember that. They show in the first when someone's one, yeah. deleting something, and it's like that that instantly makes you feel like you know that that person is questioning what they're saying. They said something that they don't feel like you're gonna accept or you're going to be offended by or they just they don't want to confess the thing that they wanted to say to you so they've like they've restructured what they're saying and you're like oh god evil spy boy in the chat said is asl in this game and that's like also a massive mood that feels slightly different than messenger because that was like chat room that was like that was like that was random strangers yeah Yeah. and yeah and pretending to be a 45 year old soccer mom um (laughs) but like uh yeah but all of your response to that 45 mother of three i miss i miss that whole thing i like i think that's why i genuinely think that's why discord has caught on in such a huge or part of why it's gone in such a huge yeah. way is it really recaptures that idea of like like discord is now just an app that i always have running on my computer like even when i'm not using it it's there because people will message and i'm like okay i need to get back like and that it, more so than like text messages and stuff like yeah it's yeah, it's wild yeah. um, and just just quickly to go back to the game itself no let's the, talk about the 90s more well no what i was going to ask just to, to 90s? My head around it, is the, the fact that this is a sequel or a third in the the series that this has chosen the template of facebook so it is i imagine playing off all of the, like, uh, whereas the first one was an instant messenger, the second one was an sort of evolution of an IM kind of. It was, it was still instant. Me- it was, you were still right. using AIM in the second one, but. Because um, it was set pretty soon after the first one from memory. Yes. Yeah. Right. But um, it, the the difference is it had it started to include those other elements like the fake YouTube yes. page and things like that that allowed you to kind of get more of a sense of like the time. Because it also, not only does it like take you to a YouTube page and be like, oh, listen to this song. This is two still. Two and three. Right, okay. Listen to this song. It also shows you, like, here are a bunch of other songs from that time. And here were the meme videos of that era. Yeah, so that's it's like, awesome. oh my God, like, like um, you know, the Oprah Winfrey, You Got a Car remix or whatever was yeah, like right. in 2008. And yeah. So, I, but sorry, yeah. But then the gameplay element is you're playing around with lots more Facebook style. Uh, 
IMs, looking at pages, looking at their photos. Yes. It's that but, kind of And it's of constantly style. being updated. So you'll be talking to someone, but then all of a sudden you'll get like a notification. It's like so-and-so has replied that they are going to that party. That's and great. it's like, oh, shit. Like you get invited to two parties and you have to pick one. Yeah, okay. And then it's like other people yeah, right. make their decision based on the, the drama. On the, on the decision that you made and what you've clicked attending to. Fuck, and remember so these things when you would do the – Yeah. And like I saw her thing before, where she, like status update is something I completely forgot well, they existed. Took, which is like not things anymore, but like yeah, yeah she said be. like Evelyn but is a trash panda disguised as a teenage <laughs> girl. I'm like, I remember this. And like when I first first started using Twitter, it like I was on Twitter like when it was in beta when I could in Australia, and it was yeah. literally like Nick Boy, and then I would write is in a hotel in San Francisco. Yeah. Like, yeah, using yeah, it yeah. like it was yeah, a, status yeah, yeah. a status update. And then, yeah. yeah, and now it's now it's some Russian political tool. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but, is it but, more fun having more tools? Or not more fun, but is there more is it more interesting having more than just an IM kind of yes, juggle chat? Definitely, because there's more there's more to it because you start to pay attention to and the, you do this with Facebook. Mm. You start to pay attention to the other things people are doing outside of the messenger thing. So for example, like yeah, cool. um you know, uh, Emily and I always kind of bonded on indie music and all of a sudden she's like, hey, I've got this new song that I quite like and it's like really electronic. And I'm like, I didn't know you like this kind of music. She's like, yeah, I just like to try new stuff sometimes. And then all of a sudden I see that like Jeff is like, has posted a thing about being really into like um, some like electronic band. And or I'm likes like, a band or yeah. Like, so oh, it's fucking Jeff that's yeah, got her right. onto this. Yeah, right. And I can oh, see that. Wow. From, yeah, do you know what I mean? So you start to see that stuff that's and I was cool. just like, oh my God. Because this feels, cool. it feels like, because the first one was pretty basic and the mechanic is still the same of like, you choose the direction that you want the conversation to go in basically and yeah. then it auto types out the response, right? Yeah. And then they have a response to that and then you get more options oh, again. Right, you're not actually But there, was, think, yeah. there wasn't as much of that. There was some of it and that was like the joy of that first game was like, I can see that you like Coldplay on your account, so I'm going to talk to you about Coldplay, Coldplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in order to have a m deeper conversation with it's you. Much more Whereas this one that, seems yeah. a bit more dynamic in the way that you have those interactions. Yeah, and also that's the whole idea of the big thing of Facebook is tagging people in photos of and course, stuff. Of course, yeah. And that's a part of it as well. So you choose yeah, an cool. avatar at the start, and it's just a blank-faced, coloured person. But every single person has a different colour, so that you're able to identify yeah. all yeah. of your okay, different friends. Okay, that's cool. So, and so all of a sudden, it's just like, you know, she's tagged in a photo with fucking Jeff or whatever, and I'm just like... Purple guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a clever way to overcome the, the photo elements. I'm a spending a lot of time on Jeff, but this is just the, the no, path that Jeff. I went down. Yeah. There are all different people that you can be in, in interacting in different paths yeah. that you can choose. Right. It's just like my specific my experience. Yeah. Violet Wind asks, if, is Jeff the new Brad? And Brad was, Brad the, was the guy. The right. Jeff yeah. Was, yeah, Jeff is definitely And Brad. how in-depth are the pages? Like, can you follow, you're on someone's page, if you click on like their friends, you can go to their page and they have a pretty fleshed out page? Or sometimes is it you have the option to like go and like add other people's friends, sometimes you don't. It's yeah, kind okay. of like, it does kind of uh, you know, funnel you yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to- It's not yeah. every part of this page is interactive in the way that a regular Facebook page is because no, you don't no. find yourself lost, you've still got direction there. Yeah, but you can go and like click on people's info and stuff like that and see what they're into and, and you know, some photos of them and it's stuff like that. It's a clever way to evolve the game and like to literally take other platforms and make them- I I'll be very disappointed if Emily is away for isn't in Habbo Hotel. <laughs> it's just TikTok. I, just, I feel just like TikTok. Um, it's I feel, just TikTok. I feel like I'm um, more emotionally invested in this one. I think because of the fact that it is more involved with different. I was things gonna going to say yeah, yeah. and it sounds like you're doing a little bit of like sleuthing and like like snooping, I'm which was all to, social I'm media. To be really good and not take the and I kind of want to do a separate playthrough where I do take the bait and I do like tell people the secrets or I do like try to impersonate my friend to talk to Jeff and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? Like, because at the moment I'm trying to play it so straight and have the best possible out outcome in which Emily and I get married and live happily ever after, but I just don't think that's going to happen. You don't want to marry a high school sweetheart. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's where we are at the moment. She and Jeff are going to have like three kids before they're 22, yeah. <laughs> get divorced at 24, and the kids are going to grow up meth addicts. <laughs> oh, God. It's not a life you want to live. That's dark, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I mean, it's their choice, isn't it? <laughs> I'm fairly certain all of that was a Panic at the Disco song. <laughs> uh, cool. Awesome. And, I, and the final thing I'll ask um, is the, I remember the writing in the first one as being like pretty accurately nailing how teenagers spoke during it that time period. It is so fucking spot And it doesn't on. feel, it didn't feel like right, forced or, where yeah. it's no, like every it is, sentence had it some is slang. It's amazing yeah, okay, how cool. beautifully it's written yeah, and good. how much it feels like you're just having one of those like 
teenage conversations with someone. It just nails every single response. And what it gives you, because you obviously you can't just type out your own responses, it gives you three options. You pick one and then you just mash the keyboard and it types out. That's a fun out. mechanic. That's, yeah, yeah which is so, so good. So it actually, so good. And it's really important because it makes you feel like you are actually typing, yeah. Yeah. even if you're just going, blah, 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 you know, and and then you hit enter and then you, you see your message get sent and then the other person it says they're typing and you're just like, oh God, what are they going to say next? And it does, and it does that importantly so that it's like, you know, it's giving you a set number of responses to kind of point you down different, you know, story paths. But like, it's really effective. And the, and the writing is never like, you know how sometimes when you play story games, it says like, oh, you can say this, but then it gives you a different response. And you're like, hang on, that's not what I agreed to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the tone isn't accurately reflected. Oh, I hate that. That's so annoying. Yeah, yeah. Pet peeves. It, it, it yeah. never does that. It always, Lightly interrogate. It always, you killed her. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what are you doing here? <laughs> that's some serious LA no <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it never kind of puts you in that situation, which I really appreciate. I feel like it's all an accurate I'm representation. <laughs> um, just embellishes it a bit more. And, and if anything, you know, is always a, a better version of what you're choosing and it's just great and i'm cool. really enjoying it and i just hope they keep making these games for as long as we keep communicating awkwardly on the internet i demand an update Always. next week about how this relationship is going or has yeah, gone. We won't. i can still salvage it I'm, i have faith yeah I but yeah. i demand you only play it here in the office because <laughs> while pete's over there going oh steph's over there going oh. no 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 <laughs> why <laughs> jeff Jeff. <laughs> uh, all right. Jeff, well, yeah. man. My turn. It is 8.30. Crikey. And uh, well, that's fine. We're a yeah, fucking video good. game talk show. We, who would have thought that this many games are out in a period when no games come out? Mm -hmm. um, baseball. <laughs> <laughs> baseball. Baseball is fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play again. Uh, no. So I've been playing something equally as bro -y to start us off, but then it gets more like... More like Nuanced. on brand as we go down. More Jeff. Um, we're going to start with COD Season 3, which dropped today it did. at 2 o'clock. Um, I literally brought my PS5 into <laughs> the office so that I could play it um, because I was like, well, I'm not going to be home, uh, but I'm going to play it. And then Pete's in there with a the saw back and I'm like, where's the fucking HDMI cable? Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Season 3 dropped. We got two new maps. Uh, Yemen, Yemen Tau, which is this one, uh, this sort of like snowy Soviet Union uh, observation map, uh, which is a 6v6 map. It's definitely new. This isn't an old rework. This map? This, no, no, no. This is oh, okay. new. Yeah, this is new. Looks there like is aerial a, or one of those air, satellite ones. But there yeah. is a rework map coming mid season. Okay, cool. Um, uh, this map is uh, uh, the way I have my relationship with Call of Duty maps is like, I hate um, the good maps when they first drop because the good maps are actually like all about map knowledge becomes important when uh, once you get your head around it then that's when the map becomes like fun to play and you become good at it and they're more but, than three lanes so they're confusing at the start and, but they're also very difficult to play because there's like no real choke point and there's just tons of uh, sight lines all the time so uh, I hated this one for the first like <laughs> four or five matches that I played and then I started to like find a groove and get into it um, and then the second map uh, is this um, uh, one out in the desert called Diesel which is a 3v3 map which this is the one that I liked at the beginning and I know I will end up hating. Uh, much smaller map. Again, this idea of like a very uh, clustered center with quite a bit of space on the outside. So it reminded me of something like um, Satellite in, uh, Cold, in Cold War at the moment. Um, but uh, these dropped a few new guns, some new operators, and I'm very excited about jumping. The face-off maps have season. been really tiny, so I'm glad this one looks like there's a bit more space in it. The 3v3 ones. Yeah, like been, Mansion and stuff. They're which, stupidly yeah, small. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is like... Uh, it, most of those uh, small ones are... They also... They could be like... I mean, mansion, Mansion's probably... Oh, Mansion's smaller than this, but they're mainly inside, and it, it definitely has that feeling of, like, a very claustrophobic small thing. The fact that there's a lot of... This is all outside, basically, uh, makes it feel way bigger than yeah. it actually is. So, but your yeah. embassies and those ones that are terrible, that you can oh. see you can see all the spawns. And, yeah. and I, hate, I hate the satellite launch one, like the one that's just the circle room. That where it's oh, like the size a of joke. the studio. That's a joke map. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, so. But uh, but yeah, so uh, new season. Uh, there's tons of new content coming in this. There's something that I'm very excited about um, because I, and we'll talk about this in a second, but like I want to love Warzone. I want to get into Warzone. I feel like there's so much content sitting there waiting for me to play and I just don't play it because I don't like Warzone. But there's something coming mid-season in this and it's called... Uh, 
So I was watching Ink Slasher, who's like a COD YouTuber, and it's called. Uh, he was talking about multi-team elimination. He was like, no one's really talking about this, but multi-team elimination, which is this mode coming mid-season, is sounds like it's basically battle royale but in black ops so it's like a big map um and you go like as a squad drop down i think part of the reason that i don't like warzone is i like the feeling of black ops shooting like this engine i like this engine way more than i like the modern warfare engine yeah okay which i'm sure is an extremely controversial statement but i'm good at this engine and i'm very bad at the modern warfare engine so the idea of like a battle royale using this engine is way more exciting to me uh so yeah so yeah. anyway, uh, new season, oh. two new maps at launch is a very nice thing. And last time we just got Apocalypse, which was one. So twice as much uh, time spending on new stuff and all the new battle pass unlocks for that. Cool. Warzone has been shitting you though. Well, Warzone, uh, as part of the season three update, we have to keep waiting. There's another 12 hours to go before anything actually happens. Uh, the fact that the modes have been locked out to be just on um, the Alcatraz map at the moment. Um, so they are the rebirth modes, which are the smaller map and their uh, variations of Battle Royale, um, which, yeah, I, I'm like you. I haven't played a lot of Battle Royale. I play Plunder all the time mm -hmm. um, and I find it very frustrating. The, the aggression really gets to me because there's so much downtime and then the time to kill is so quick and you get, you know, it's frustrating. I fucking hate all the stuff on the Alcatraz map. It's a joke. Right now, they're making us wait 12 hours while the event in the Verdansk map, yep. which is the bigger map, uh, is happening. Uh, I think it's no real surprise there's a bomb has gone off, some sort of nuclear event. Well, multiple nukes, because they dropped like over the last couple of days. Yeah, so if you've been playing off. any Warzone uh, or any stuff on Verdansk, be it Battle Royale or... Um, plunder there's been multiple alarms going off warnings missiles flying over the map uh it's your Fortnite style event something's going to change well i think we do uh, have a trailer for the oh for cool Dansk yeah if there's something there for dance so i guess i'm just a little frustrated that i was waiting for season three to drop where they could go cool here's the new multiplayer and here's the new war zone for some reason they've gone multiplayer season three has dropped and there's now 24 hours which is now 12 hours left until the Verdansk map opens and we can play uh battle royale and plunder again i hope fingers crossed they don't take my sweet plunder away um but there's this thing where it's like the lore of the game is the nukes gone off and there's 24 hours to wait to see what's happened and i'm like i don't know why they didn't marry that up with the season three drop if they want to push everyone to go and check out the multiplayer yeah, stuff, totally. I assume yeah it seems like then. that should have yeah. been happening 24 hours ago i guess so so I, bo I i installed here at work everything to play warzone and went in and there is just uh as i said three rebirth modes on alcatraz and they are trash they are they are a battle royale in a tiny map where everyone's just re-parachuting in and landing on the roof of a building at night of all fucking things so it's just pitch black and it's twitchy and everyone was in the office while I was doing it and you I threw your controller I threw my controller <laughs> and was like fuck this I, it's it's not a fun compromise for what I'm waiting for uh, but I get some people might like that so I'm um, yeah a little grumpy about that that I have you also said some very gamer things I did I really did <laughs> uh, but God brings that out in me I did but uh, I was being ironic uh, <laughs> you were being genuine I was so I, uh, but like you, I'm playing heaps of the multiplayer now at the moment. And so I'm keen to jump in and see these changes. I've, you know, got the battle pass, all the stuff. I've, you know, got the t-shirt. Um, so that's fine. Is it this one? Uh, no, but I, uh, yeah, I want, I'm worried that the, uh, the change to the Warzone map will be a big hole. Uh, I've seen some screenshots where there's some cool, like, like canyons and, and whole reworks. It's been way too long before anything's changed. I think, the, I think it's going to be a pretty serious work. I assume I yeah. that they can't, be. like, they're going up against Fortnite and the idea of, like, how often that map... Exactly. Yeah. But then There'll be a hole and a train. A hole and a train yeah. is what they <laughs> added. And there were some really crap additions to it. Uh, so this should be monumental, uh, which then makes me instantly sad that I realised, crap, the last time I got to play the normal one with my mates, which I do all the time, it's like, that was the last time we were on that map, possibly. Do you think they'll put giant, enormous rappers in there doing rap concerts? I can only hope. Um, That'd yeah. be sick. It would, but, it would, but it would be white rappers. <laughs> <laughs> it would be like Limp Bizkit or something. <laughs> oh, um, my goodness. Uh, I did see, uh, did just very quickly, old mate Dave in the chat said, Nick, you got to stop meleeing. Yes, there's something... Uh, I, I don't know if oh, there's something wrong... Is this your footage? Yeah. I don't know if there's something wrong with my dual shock, but the, like, or I've just got an extremely strong right <laughs> thumb, but, like, <laughs> the the for me, the melee is extremely sensitive, and that's also, like, change sight things. So, like, when I'm trying to aim down 
sites and quickly adjust. Sometimes it just, yeah, it's very frustrating. Uh, and then the second person, Melting Point, said, how is the PPSSH, which is one of the new guns. Weapon, yeah. um, and it's good. It, like, vomits bullets. Uh, it's a submachine gun, which I don't use as much as, like, an assault rifle, but uh, but so far it's pretty good. Cool. How many of you are playing with the controller? So, so well, uh, quick. Pod's a pretty controller. Pod's a, controller a great video controller game. shooter. Yeah. And yeah. one of the reasons I was furious is I was playing on PC, and I am beyond the age that I can keep up with people playing COD on a mouse and keyboard. Mm -hmm. It is just it's so it's infuriating playing sometimes with a controller and watching your kill cam going how can people move that fast have reaction speeds that quick <laughs> yeah. so mouse and keyboard blah controller just at least gives me that slight little like there's a moment to possibly dance around and get it's a fucking bull rush that one yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh yeah cool we should play together we should. Well, we, we should all play Call of Duty together. We should all play COD. I, I actually said that on a phone call yesterday with the guys. I was like, <laughs> I feel like we should just all play together for a while. The zombie outbreak. We'll play that though. Yeah. Yeah, done. I oh, there's going to be a new... Yeah, no, I no, I'm saying like I'm there. A uh, new outbreak, outbreak map because they rotate uh, every time you move between the uh, maps for yeah. outbreak mode. Yeah, yeah, They've yeah. added a new one. In Which is good. I bought there, that game specifically to play no, with you. No. I, that was money that I spent I'm so wasted. for you. I'm so sorry. That's We're really sweet. Play. I really appreciate that. Um, uh, okay, next up. Let's get on to something that more people might enjoy. Mm. I had no idea this was coming. I, for the first time in a very long time, I was like, I'm going to see what's new and upcoming on Steam. What's trending? What are the kids playing? <laughs> Portal Reloaded. Yep. Okay. A fan mod of Portal 2. Yep. Adding 25 new Portal levels. Completely original. Total, like, voice acting, full story, and a new Portal. Wow. Portal. So the like a new Portal. Yeah, there's like a square one or something. Yeah. So oh. I, uh, and it's free. If you own Portal 2, it's free on Steam. It's fantastic. It's mind numbingly difficult. <laughs> yeah. So I, it, like, I think it does that thing of like, it very much assumes you've played, you've you, played Portal like, recently, mod, <laughs> have played 4,000 hours of Portal 2 <laughs> and you just finished it. Um, but uh, the idea behind it is that you, uh, you're in an aperture science sort of test facility again. You've got your portal gun, um, but you don't get the portal gun for a few test chambers because what it starts experimenting you with is this new uh, portal, which is the time portal. So oh my God. the game okay. starts and it, it's not quite the level of writing as Portal 2. Of course. And that's a very high bite to ask bar to uh, jump jump sure um or portal <laughs> through uh but i uh, but i was very encouraged when the game starts and a robot voice like it, it starts black you sort of wake up and a robot voice goes hi you have been in cryo storage for 16 days and four decades <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's very funny Good. um and so the idea is that you uh can jump between now and 20 years in the future oh good ah. yes. in the future Yes, in the future. So, th what happens is, so this is the future. Though when you go back, you go into the past, so no, it's okay. I, just, I assume from the wake up that everything's in ruin, so I was like, cool, you play in the ruin one, and then jump further into 20 years, so everything's even shitter. Oh, so, uh, this is to... Oh, maybe, you start in sorry, the future? Oh, maybe you start in the future and you're going 20 years in the past, but it took, things yeah, get better, I can't things remember. Things go rebuild at 20 years? It's, yeah, yeah. It, like... Uh, either way, one is clean and new, and Got one it. is old and dilapidated. Okay. It may, it, maybe it totally makes more sense that it's old and dilapidated. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. And anyway. a clever, just quick, like a clever way for a van-made mod to use the Portal Two elements that were all this different totally. stuff yeah. and the new stuff. Or yeah, the, sorry. And so That's what? Right. And so what that does is like Portal Two already a bit of a mind fuck. This then adds on the idea that when you shoot a portal in the past, you go to the future. That portal is still there. When you shoot shoot a portal mm. in the future and you go to the past. It's that not there. Not there. When you shoot a portal in a blue portal in the <laughs> past and you go to the future, you can shoot another blue portal. So two blue portals oh. can exist in two different time periods. My brain just imploded. Oh no, I've gone yeah, cross-eyed. <laughs> but you but at the moment at least, and I think and I believe you can you do unlock this like a a portal time portal element to your gun but at the moment the time portals are these gates they exist that you unlock. Yeah. yeah okay and so you then shoot portals to get to places unlock a time gate walk through it and then you're like okay in the past uh this this portal like the white area where i can shoot a portal exists but in the future Broke it's away. been broken 
but that I need to get there to get to the door. So now I need to put three portals somewhere to do. And then on top of all this, there's the cubes. And so the cubes, when you when you pick up a cube in the past, wherever you put the cube, we're in the seeing past, it now. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, that's where it is in the future. You can then go to the future and pick that cube up and bring it back to the past. But and then as soon as you move the cube in the past, the future cube disappears. Oh, so no. you bring a cube <laughs> back from the, f from the future to the past and use it to sit on something. And you're like, cool, I'll sit it on this button and open it up. Then you pick up the past cube and the future cube disappears. <laughs> and you're like, um, fuck. Oh, wow. And so it That's is brilliant. a genius addition to this. At what point does your mother try to have sex with you? Someone doesn't remember back, back to the future. Okay. <laughs> that was heaps I was awkward. Like, Terminator? Well, yeah, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, right, yeah. I was like, yeah. Hot, hot Did that joke. happen? 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. <laughs> Pete's just lost it. He's got a very soul back in his eye on set. That's the power of love. I was hoping the context would be provided in a Fuck. much shorter window. Than Fuckwork <laughs> Liar 101 says risk. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, the, yeah, so the addition of that time thing is just so <laughs> genius. It feels so, like, Portal 3 totally. idea, like, so spot on for what this series would do. Yeah. Um, so I've played about nine levels or something um and the one i'm stuck on at the moment is multi-layered you need to use that thing of like using momentum to get through say, but, oh, my, yeah. but from what i can gather i need to use momentum using multiple of the same portals through a time period no. and i'm just like no how do i do this yeah cool. uh, Let's talk baseball again <laughs> but but genius it runs great that's great all the story stuff in between the levels is like fun and totally like on brand for what portal is it just yeah i was i'm super impressed and it's free if you everyone owns portal 2 on steam it's free go get it it's gonna just mess with your brain amazing so, yeah great total blast that's uh crazy. and uh hello we just got raided Aww. uh by the periodic table of awesome Yay. awesome yes. hello periodic table to the table of awesome mm. uh Periodic Table of Awesome, a very excellent time for you to be joining the conversation because we are talking about science and we're talking about uh, Portal Reloaded. Yes. Um, so that's the second thing I've been playing. And then the third thing I've been playing, again, a little thing that I just found. But we're back on brand for Nikki. Heavily. Yep. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> this is, so this is a demo for a game that was kickstarted and was coming out pretty soon, but they've pushed it because they've, they've, they're adding more to it. So the demo is called Unbeatable Arcade Mix. Um, and Will, if we can get the trailer started for this, and just give us a bit of music underneath as well for some, for some sound. Um, this is a um, uh, rhythm mm -hmm. game um, with an extremely cool art style. Oh, yeah, so cool. Um, and, uh, and so the idea behind it is um, in the demo, there are, there are five tracks that you play with. It's all original music um, and it, the music fucking slaps. It's so cool. It's kind of like Churches meets Paramore or something. Yeah. Will, if you could bring the audio up now. I'm, yeah, yeah, uh, I'm mixing for oh, us. It's the pink hair girl with the microphone. In the and this is the, the trailer. Is beat and she is you and you only have to worry about two buttons. Up and down. And I was like, I love a trailer that explains the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is cool. That's a like big text so with that see-through look. Yeah. yeah. Do that a lot. Hit up or down accordingly and beat I do that a lot. <laughs> This is unbeatable. A game where music is illegal and you, you do crimes. You and do crimes <laughs> is where it got me. That's uh, and so crimes against music or for music. And so it's uh, it's on PC. It's kind of got a cool like Scott I was just about vibe. To say. Yeah. yeah. Kit Khan, you should notice that. One hundred percent. Yeah. It also is um. There's an anime studio and I can't remember what they're called. Um. But this is their kind of look as well. Right. It begins with a P or something. Sure, um. Yeah. yeah but it's a the, fun spin on that kind of classic uh, anime look, which is like yeah, a little less outlined and a little more kind of like. Astley and fun pace. Totally, yeah. Like, and cool. so the cool thing about this is, is, so it's a rhythm game, but when the actual oh, game no. comes out, half of it is a rhythm game and half of it is this kind of like run around town, meet people, uh, like I interfere with their lives. You're you're a cl you're like a kid that has a band. So you're putting together like the set list of your band over the course of the game. You can play as, and Will, if you, oh, sorry, Pete, if we get the sound up a little bit here as well. Like just all the tracks are totally awesome. Every time I open up this book of mine, oh, 
It's this got a little one. bit of that J-pop kind of like. It's like J-pop mixed with like pop punk mixed with mm. um, yeah. sort of like uh, whatever churches and that sort of like yeah. that yeah. vibe is. Churches. Um, but it's uh, yeah, it's it's super fun. Um, the the beginner mode, which is what, like what it default sets you on, is extremely easy. I would recommend putting it on like. I think I was playing on hard, which was where the level of like it feel like it feels like you're playing the song, and that's what like in rhythm games the my like what you want is where like you're basically hitting all the beats and stuff. It's got all the all the like enemies or whatever. There's a heap of variety on like how you attack them and how you Mm. bring them together and stuff. But are you actually only going up and downing? downing? You're literally just up and downing, Or, or in that case, you're going up and down at the same time. You're holding, you're dodging the orange things and stuff, and then yeah, they start coming in from the other side as well. Sure. And it alternates between, um, but just the whole vibe of the thing is super awesome. It's made yeah. by like seven people, and the um, the lead vocals, the girl who sings basically all the songs on it, is also like their social media manager <laughs> and PR marketing person. That's um, so it just feels like one of those real labors of love. I I went to the DM, I uh, went to the Twitter page of like every single developer, and all of them like this is not a mark of anything, but all of them have like 400 followers. This is like yeah. their like they've all worked on games before but this is like the thing that they got together where they're like this is what we're going to be known for yeah. and it's nice. just like I saw it and I was just like this is so me and <laughs> so, uh, so yeah I thoroughly re- awesome. recommend checking out it's called um, Unbeatable Arcade Mix and uh, the demo you can go to their website but the demo is on itch.io as well yes. um, and uh, yeah I don't, it doesn't have a release date at the moment but you can play this uh, as much as you want and yeah it's got five songs in it already and they're all actually just awesome that's awesome yeah very cool right oh well you Raj. read my mind I did yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> should we just go to a sponsor now yeah let's go do an ad break right now now yeah. Nick where the hell were you Meet Nathan Rohner, a mild-mannered game dev and VR enthusiast, but a freak jewel severed foot accident has given him hot tub cars for feet and turned him into Roller Star. By day, Nathan must deal with the ever-crushing burden of being a brilliant indie game developer. But when the evil Dr. Pocket decides to steal all his money and not make his custom Patreon commercial for six months, you must use Roller Star's flowing locks of customer loyalty to smack that pocket back into place. Patreon? More like... <laughs> and after a hard day of crowdfunding injustice, Rollerstar sloshes into the pants of his lovers with his sexy jewel jet hot tub feet. <laughs> and when it comes to cruising for a feed, Rollerstar rolls right into the thick of it. Hungarian slop doesn't stand a chance with Rollerstar's high-powered hot tub boost, leaping over the Central European cuisine with ease. <laughs> Don't worry, kids. He washes up real good. Roller Star. Roller Star comes with everything you see here, plus everything you don't, including billions of hot tub-borne diseases. Talent. (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh, uh, yay. There he is. There he so is. clean. So clean. Oh, man. It took a while to clean. <laughs> <laughs> His hair you know, definitely looks oilier. Yeah, but smell it. I don't want to. <laughs> okay. It smells beefy. No. <laughs> it smells beefy. It smells strong and not beefy. Uh, so that was, of course, a new ad uh, for Rollerstar, who I feel like we've owed Rollerstar an ad. For a while. So thank you very much for your patience, Rollerstar. We hope it was worth it for you. Uh, it was a... Um it was a very fun thing to put together. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of been a dream of mine. Well, I think I said a few episodes back, we talked about doing more commercials. And I said, like, there's a genre of ad I want to make. And I didn't <laughs> yeah. let on them, but it was to make a toy ad. Yeah. And to make a, like, we, you, you nailed it. It we watched awesome. a lot of ads of, uh, yeah. We watched Action Man. And we watched so many Action Man ads. And then there was, like, to the max. And then there was, like, a, there was a day where Pete was at, like, a big W or a Target or something for 40 minutes, just slacking me and Gus pictures of different dolls, like, <laughs> What about this one? What about this? And then it was like cars and it was like, well, we could, we could put, because at first he didn't have hot tub feet and we were like, we just wanted to put like some Hot Wheels cars on yeah. it or something. Well, we wanted to put, I mean, ideally we we're going to get a roller skating yeah, roller skate thing. Roller uh, one. Yeah. And then we're like, well, we can't find roller skating uh, figures. So we could put some Hot Wheels on him and he's roller star because he's got cars for feet. Yeah. And that sounds like a stupid toy thing that would absolutely exist. And then when I went to the Hot Wheels aisle, there were hot tubs there, which, and hot tubs are huge on Twitch right now. I'm not sure if you're aware. So we wanted to put some hot tubs to his feet and that's where the script was born. Uh, and then the, uh, and then obviously like putting that together um, in the edit and stuff, the little surprise there as well is that the line Patreon, more like Patreon, is actually, that is uh, read by Roller Star himself, Nathan Rona. Yeah. So uh, yeah, if you bought the doll, does not talk. Does, does he not, know, does did he know it would happen today? Uh, I did message and okay, say, right, like, cool. check out, it'll be in tonight. So. Yeah, good. Okay, okay good. Uh, and he, can, he can scrub through if he's not here, if you missed it. No, oh, he is. Here. He was there. He was, oh, he was the oh. first person and he said, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I like that Gus has scratched an ad off his, like, wish list. And then I wrote an ad today mm. that I, if we make it, <laughs> we'll, <laughs> oh, we're going to make it. We'll scratch <laughs> off my list of things that I've wanted to do. Uh, and I'm very excited about that as well. So the ads are getting weird because... <laughs> Yeah. The life insurance one was the one that I was excited to do because I see that one so often. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> I feel like if anyone, in fact, it would be great. Feel free to just like send me a message wherever or start a thread in the Discord or something about ad parody genres because we we kind of like, I feel like we've hit or I've hit everything that I could think of. So that's why we started moving to like some, there's some sketches <laughs> and that sort of thing. And so, you know what I really want to do as is. well? It's like, a, I, I want to do one of the infomercial ones where, where someone's having a really tough time doing some basic tasks. Oh, the black and white ones where they're like, oh, like, where they can't cut a tomato. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah people are saying yeah. that infomercial brand power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Eva said, uh, shout yeah, it's like the warehouse like sales guys and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, cool. You know, I can't pour this milk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, thank you very much, Roller Star, for your patience, and we hope you enjoy your commercial uh, going forward. Um, also, you <laughs> saw uh, some words from our sponsors there as well, and we thought that uh, for the next round of like word from our sponsor submissions, we would give you a theme that could maybe help with some inspiration. Because, totally. uh, as as we said, like we saw if if we said to Steph, "Hey, could you send us a word from from our sponsors?" She would go floor. Because the blank canvas is overwhelming. <laughs> it's sad. True. And so, uh, sad. Pete, you picked the theme. Uh, yeah, but uh, I just said a word and then you're like, yeah, that's a good one. Well, and it's like, <laughs> like, but like, it could be anything. It could be anything. <laughs> uh, so, the theme for uh, the next seven days is hands. Hands. <laughs> Something to do with your hands. Your reaction. Make a thing that is hands. Uh, the best one. <laughs> will win a uh, back pocket mug, which Nick said, because that's perfect for your hands, yeah. which is why we ended up going with that and didn't think of something better. People hands, already getting- H-A-N-D-S. No, if they want to go Hans. You can go Hans if you want. And you want but is this Hans? like... Hans is, Christ, is this Hans, like Trump Hans Fest Hans where they can just interpret it any way that they want to? I'd say so. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Anyone who's already made one can do another one. Uh, and I don't think we're limiting it to a tier, are we? Anyone who's watching no, me no, say these yeah, yeah. words right now can yeah. do it. No one else can, though. If you're watching these words later, don't do it. Yeah, and the like you said, the best one in our eyes will win themselves a back pocket mug, and all of our hands will touch that mug before I put it in the post for you. So totally. it's like... This is, it's a little and the everlasting glory of having it played in an ad break. 
Of course. There's the Everlasting. Hand, but mainly the hand Everlasting. cup. Um, uh, <laughs> you don't want to want win the one where the theme is pee. All right. Uh, so let's move on now. I was going to say, we all pee in the cup and send it. No good? You say Pete? Pete. <laughs> <laughs> no good? Steph, no good? Why? I don't know. We said this last week. Sometimes I just say things. Things pop into your head sometimes and I don't know how they get there. It's, uh, and then the best broken. thing is that they somehow make their way out of your mouth as well, which is even weirder. I'm very broken. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, maybe let's we could fix you. Maybe we could fix me and all of us with a little game we call The Game of Life. <laughs> It's a, it's a good sax note. The Game of Life brought to you by Nicrotex, a.k.a. Nick Belling, on uh, Twitter. And normally, we, we, uh, I read out a Nick Belling tweet and it's like, ha, 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 he's so funny. Mm. And this one, he's actually looking for help here. This is a cry for help from Nick Belling. Oh. So, I thought I would read this one out. Nice. Uh, can anyone in Sydney recommend me a stylist? I don't know how to dress myself or choose clothes, and I think I'm ready to stop getting around looking like if leprosy was a person. <laughs> Jesus! I've seen photos and streams of Nick Belling, and I would say that's an unfair assessment of your own fashion sense. Me too. Um, I think you look great. Yeah. However. More of a, like, someone with, like, lupus or something. But, like, leprosy, No. Fashion style wise <laughs> Stephanie I have something to say about that And that is that I have Worked with stylists Before And I find them Very stressful And often they want to put you In things that are different They think are cool to, Yeah That don't represent you as a person Even though they'll say That they want to They want to like Know all about you And the things that you like And they want you to be comfortable They're going to like Put you in a weird pink black The executive wants you To wear this bullshit <laughs> <laughs> So I would say Follow your heart. Just Embrace you. Sometimes you'll end up in a mushroom shirt if and, you, and, and the crowd you'll will be led astray. If you have a, f- a f- person with a similar bo- body type who, who is in your life and you think they dress well, just ask them where they get their clothes from and buy those clothes. Yeah, person. That, and that's don't the best thing you can do. And don't look to Hollywood because you see those Hollywood things, and it's like how to dress like Daniel Craig, and it's like he's wearing this four thousand oh, dollars totally. sweater. Everything is <laughs> cashmere. What Everything fuck? is cashmere, and everyone looks good in a in like a literally nine hundred dollar yeah. cashmere sweater. Of yeah. course you do. Yeah. Um, I would say my advice to that would be like, so I'm not saying dress like me, but this is really. Funny. Have you seen a Celine Dion shirt? No, no, no. This is really funny because I was actually going to talk about this in the post show, oh. but. We're going to talk about it now sure. because we're going to help Nick Belling, which is I, I was thinking about how we have all developed, <laughs> which we didn't used to have, but we've all developed an, a style. And I think part of it is because we're all on camera together and this wasn't always the case. <laughs> and so it, obviously me, Pete and Gus, there are some similarities, lots of differences, but Don't there are see some similarities. Don't see him. And often we could find that, like, you know, particularly Gus and I, often for years have found ourselves in a situation where it's like we're dressed the same. And so we – but now on Back Pocket, I went I, – I realized, like, when we started the show, I, w- I was looking at the first couple of shows that we did and I was like, oh, that's interesting that all of us are kind of, like, dressed the same. We're yeah. all wearing, like um, – Black jeans, just sort of like checkered shirts or just like um, plain tee. Yeah, that dress. sort of thing. Yeah. Like like Pete's actually dressed as an outlier for what he normally is, but Very this is it. part of the evolution of what Pete is becoming. And I made a conscious decision to go, okay, I'm going to actively dress different than the other guys. I like I have I have elements of this is I can't believe I know there's a video game talk show, but you won't know what you got. We got a lot of videos um, in the front. I I went, I'm going to actively emphasize a different part of my wardrobe as opposed to the part of the wardrobe that's similar to yours. Sure. So, uh, I have quite a few streetwear clothes and particularly like 90s streetwear is something mm. that's like very much in at the moment. And so, I was like, well, I'll heavily lean into the 90s streetwear look so that when someone is watching the show, they could be like, oh, Nick's the guy that wears like the oversized Celine Dion t-shirt. You've and thought like, about this so much. Yeah, because it, it it's something that differentiates particularly you and me because we sit next to each other. We've both have facial hair glasses we often wear caps and it's like oh how do we make it so that we're two different people just from like a visual perspective yep. and so i was like i'm gonna lean into the street style thing mm. steph you have le- lent heavily into a street style thing which is less 90s even though you're wearing a smashing pumpkins thing right now but you're more like a sort of current street style look 
a very comfortable but fashionable look, which I feel like is, again, part of your look, but is not necessarily being something that you wore on TV a lot. Yeah, I feel like day to day I wear plain T-shirts a lot. Yeah. I like a plain T-shirt and a pair of jeans and shoes. That's what I wear. But I feel like on this show I try to wear something with a print on it. So it's funny, I have two like two T-shirt drawers at home and in one drawer I have all of my amazing plain T-shirts and then I have another drawer of just T-shirts with like pictures and logos on them that I pretty much exclusively wear on this show. Yeah. Totally. And I know that about you because I'm like, that's when I see that stuff. You dress <laughs> yeah. totally differently at home when you're on stream than you do here. Yeah. You have lent into like dressing down in a cool, schlubby way. And I don't mean that in a <laughs> No, no, way. no. No, no, <laughs> no. no, no. Schlubby, is not- schlubby is a bad word. No, I, I, I think you look I think positive outlook. I, have, yeah, yeah. I only ever think you look great, but you have lent into that sort of like. There's a kind of reserved surfwear look yes. that I go with, which is like your basic one breasted logo. I go with like, you know, your rip curls, a couple of brands that I oh, know yeah. some friends design. Yep, so yep. Harold, stuff like that. A little bit small town Gilmore girls. Yeah, yep. a little bit Gilmore girls. You gotta go occasionally. But I do like, I my overthinking of this whole process is checking the thumbnail from the week before episode and making sure it just distinctively is a, a different look from what I was wearing then. So like a different color, maybe a different like hat, collar, t-shirt combo. So I just try to make sure there's something different each week. But I like that as a way to go like, I'll start putting some outfits together. However, I have thrown a couple of the brighter colors in. I have enjoyed, like yep. I, I wore a color the other week that someone said they really liked that I thought, oh, that, that's Your nice. Your turquoisey teal thing? turquoisey yeah. teal kind of Tur- starts with a D. And yeah. chat and chat have identified you go for like lumberjack style, kind of like classic hipster look and yep. like it totally suits you to a T. Now you, it's, it's tell me. It's crazy too that you both so tell me. wear like baseball caps. Yeah, because no. I find that like, Rude. No, it's just very like not. <laughs> what do you think of that? It's not typical of a straight. <laughs> that I'm cool with. Wear baseball cap. Yeah. Like when I'm at the airport and I see dudes wearing baseball caps, I'm like American, 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 and then I sidle up next to them and they have an American accent, and I'm like, picked it. It's the hat. It's yeah. so rarely like, and I know that you're into a lot of American sports and American mm. culture and stuff like that, so it makes sense for you. You, I don't know where it came from. It was the hair. It was when it was so much when I had the yeah. really long hair. Totally. Yeah. And yeah. You it was like that's when it like, started. Let's put a hat on. He and never it, wore them before, and he, yeah. Yeah. he would constantly. It turned into a thing. I was like, I really like the long hair, but I was like, I can't handle it yep. at the time. Yeah, and like, right. it's long at the moment, but just on top. And so I am going to grow it all out. I don't know why I'm doing this. Peter's on the wrong camera. Uh, but once it all gets all big and woolly out the back, you wear the hat, you throw it over like that, you get a little bit of this going on. Yeah, and you drop into Verdansk. Um, <laughs> you drop into Verdansk. <laughs> so, yeah, totally. And for me, it's the sport thing, but it's also, it's the same thing, which is like having a bad hair day. And I put this on because it's like, I need a fucking haircut. I need to figure out what to do with my hair. I'm not happy with my hair. I need to do something with it. Peter's look. You. Now, Tell you me. used to go with like woodsman again you did lots of like the sort of like Steph dresses you and Rod and Gun style country stuff oh, um, so so attractive oh, oh no, no you always look great I wear rivers no so no but is that's the Rod look gun in that? the look the look is <laughs> okay. that sort of like you make rivers like, look like Rod and Gun <laughs> like you go for you go for mountain man look but it's changed in the last couple of weeks okay. because you have discovered the no- the power of the novelty clothing and so yeah, yeah, we've had yeah, the yeah. t-shirt with someone's face on it we've had the mushroom thing we've got this and I feel like like, I'm not railroading you down this, but this could be the thing that you start, like, heavily going into. I don't think so, because I <coughs> I don't care to spend more money on dumb shit. Okay, so you'll go back to Woods. I will go back to Plains, and then you'll see this shirt again eventually. Yeah, cool. Okay. I was like, the only reason I bought, started looking for clothes to wear on the show was because... Steph rightly pointed out that, like, when we would all wear the same fucking color, it was yep. like, oh, that's a bit of bo- boring shot. So I was like, I, n- I want to get some, like, bright colored shirt because I don't wear color. I like, I don't, I wouldn't wear this anywhere else. <laughs> well, even if, even if it didn't have an avocado with yeah, its yeah. ass out, that's not your color. I wouldn't be wearing oh my God, blue it necessarily. It's pockety. <laughs> it is yeah, pockety. Is yeah, yeah. Pockety, that's pockety button. <laughs> See it? Love it. So. I like was like, all right, I'm going to look for things. And if I look for things, they may as well be stupid because I'm only going to wear them in this setting and people are going to uh, either enjoy it or be offended by it. And they'll have to, they'll get to talk also about it dressing, either way. <laughs> the simple dressing look, which we all do, which is like, oh, we're a navy t-shirt and jeans. And then you look at the show and go, oh, we put so much effort into it all. And like three or two navy or like plain no print t-shirts. It's like, that just looks like it didn't utilize the fact that it was on camera and it looks mm. nice. Yeah. So, but my, yeah. my wardrobe at home is denim. And then, I and like, like the, I feel like we dress very similarly. Yeah, totally. And then, and then <laughs> shirts that like tees that range from without a print that range from black to navy. 
<laughs> you, yeah, range you, over. <laughs> and you, that's it. If you want like t-shirts for the show with like interesting things on them, I can help you find some. No, they've got to be they've got to be shit because I don't want to yeah. spend more than ten bucks. I on know them. it's I know this is hard for you, but as as the two people who like don't have a vested interest in how he looks, it's a delight coming in and seeing the <laughs> the butt of an avocado on Pete on someone like Pete who is an enigma of both being like an incredibly I I, conservative, serious person, but also the biggest fucking troll in the entire group. I just like I don't like I don't want to like. I don't want to like, um, you know. Am I wrong? Neg no. Your creativity that you're There's nothing exploring recently through fashion, but when he walked out in that shirt, I was like, "What is happening here?" So people, is, are, people. Is come this up. like? Are you having a midlife crisis? Like, <laughs> no, no, I'm not. The one with the mushroom shirt. Like, what? What I made love you? That it was shirt. funny. What made you add that to cart? It's like, fun. It was funny. It so good. Just it so looks good. It looked great. It looked funny. Sorry, Sorry, some some people. Weeks. Some people have suggested something that I. I'm not going to say you're going to do. <laughs> yeah. And there are no promises. But some people were like, "Oh, what if we? What if like I bought a shitty T-shirt and sent it to the PO box? Would Pete wear it? I absolutely fucking would wear it. So there you go. So that's potentially an option. Send a large to the PO box and I'll put it on. There you go. Nice. Um, and so, yeah. So anyway, so I've been thinking about the style thing of us as a group. Like I even thought about, I was like, I'm buying a new pair of shoes. And I was like, oh, do I want to go with like uh, the the pal palladiums, like the fold downs that I really like? And I went, well, I would like a pair of shoes that I, I would like to wear at work. So then I got myself a pair of like Nike mid blazer uh, 77 infinites. And I'm like, yeah, just lean into my 90s. 90s street style look because I dress like this half the time at home yeah. anyway. So there you go. All if you were athletic at all, you would. I would have sworn you came from basketball. Yeah. Oh, like that's the look. Can you've you got it nailed? Can you imagine if I was an athlete? My I know. God, I I wouldn't need to buy a single new outfit. <laughs> um, all of this was to answer Nick Belling's question from 45 minutes ago. <laughs> was, should I get a stylist? My point was. Uh, so there's a website uh, that I buy a lot of my clothes at called Culture Kings. Culture Kings do this thing where you click through and you see like the model, and it goes shop the look. And so you go, okay, yeah, I cool. like how this person looks, and then they show you all the clothes that that person's wearing that they sell, but then also things that would go with that, and that like now you need to like the streetwear style, whatever. But lots of sites have that. So if you find a site of clothing that you like. There's a good chance that Shop that sort style. of feature is there. Shop and style. <clears throat> I would say, though, I don't really know what he's going on about because I recently saw when you were talking about emo songs from the 90s, Nick Belling jumped in the chat as Microtex and said he's coming out of his cage and he's doing just fine. Gotta, gotta be down. So I don't know. It's not really yeah. emo. Though. Yeah, that was no. But it was written killers. in the way he just wrote it like in the lead speak way that made it look like that is. Oh, he did. I did see that. Yeah, yeah, he did it like, in an up and down. Yeah, and like, I was like, yep. that is definitely what I would have written on my profile. Yeah. You don't actually need help, but. This is the game of life, so you've is received it? some. It is Hit the it. game of life. Yeah. Hit it. Let's the game of life. Oh, you want to get That was, of course, the game of life. <laughs> Bit of fun We're night. back. All right, Stephanie, start us off. Yes, I'm going to, well, let's lightning round this because I feel like we spent a lot of time talking about clothes. Um, my advice this week is um, to, when you feel overwhelmed, compartmentalize, which is something that I've been doing recently, not consciously really, but when I kind of thought about it and why I feel like happier overall, despite the fact that like life can get a bit crazy, is that like we have a lot of things going on in our life, like friends and family and work and games, all this kind of stuff. And sometimes like when you have a lot of stuff going on, you just need to like hard cut one out for a while. Mm. For me, it recently, it was just, it was games. Like, obviously not the games that I'm playing for work and stuff like that, but, like, you know, there was, there was a period in the year where I was playing online games every night. Like, I was playing Destiny, I was playing Valheim, and it was, like, really fun, and I was super into that. But then all of a sudden, I just had a bunch of other stuff come in, work, my writing course was finishing, so I had to, like, focus on writing for a bit. I uh, had some family stuff that I've been sort of talking with my sister about, and I was just like, I just can't play games for a while, yeah. and I just need to focus on these things. The same way you would kind of think about the fact that, like, obviously you can't cut work out of your life when you don't want to deal with it. Mm. But it is important, I think, to just be like, work happens between this hour and this hour. And as soon as, like, that finishes, I'm going to, like, disable all my notifications so that that happens in its allotted time. And then I can focus on the other things that I want to focus on when that happens. And now I've kind of hit that point where, like, everything's kind of settling down again. And I just, like, went on and played online games. I was like, oh, my God, I've missed you guys. Like, and I'm mm. just playing games. And I'm glad to be back here. But I'm also, like, glad that I had time to focus on other things so that I wasn't feeling and I didn't let myself feel guilty about it yeah that's pretty Do you know what I mean totally yeah because like otherwise I was just like because I thought about it a few times I was like man I haven't jumped into Valheim in ages or I haven't like done this and I feel like I'm like 
my friends are going to think that I'm like not like a part of this group anymore. And, and like, I was like, no, it's fine. Everyone will still be there when you're ready to like come back. The death maze will be there. The death maze will be there. <laughs> the death, Destiny's still fucking trucking on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Still haven't got eyes of tomorrow, but I will still try. <laughs> um, and it's like, yeah. And, and now I feel like ex, ex, happy and excited to be back, um, you know, reintroducing that segment of my life back into the pie chart of things that makes up Stephanie. What are you pushing out? Did you just or do you have room for everything? Your, your half wardrobe. of your wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, it's nice burn. <laughs> it is A little funny. burn. <laughs> oh, thank God. It is funny because I feel like most things in life, ex- with the exception of like work and family, you do ebb and flow out of. Yeah. But there's something about like, I think because you identify as a gamer, like by you, I mean like us or whatever. Yeah. It feels like an obligation that it's something you have to do all the time. Like it's like it's it's a part of your life that's as important as the other two things. Mm. But I've gone through phases like you where I'm just like, I need to just like push this shit away for a bit because yeah. like it's it's becoming a chore that's weighing me down as opposed to like an escape that it needed to be. Yeah, and yeah. like likewise, like I have like group messenger chats and stuff like that. And sometimes I just have to mute them for a bit. Cause I'm like, I just can't be thinking about this and also dealing with everyone's individual, like life crises at totally. the moment. And, and now you're, and I'll come back to that when I'm ready, but like, you know, and now you're playing a game. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> so you've fallen into the trap of both of those things. Damn it. <laughs> Good advice, but not to live by. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's my advice. Nice. Good. Compartmentalized. Good. Cool. Angus. All right. How are the shoes? Shoes are fine. Shoes are polished. Shoes are looking good. Those ones, sure. But I would wear them out because my advice is to take your mama out sometime. I don't know the lyrics. Show her what it's all about. Take your mum out to dinner. Are we back on Back to the Future? No, not quite. Oh, God. (laughs) Uh, I would recommend that everyone make some time to take their mother or a parent out to dinner. Yep. One, like depending on everyone has different situations. Mm -hmm. I know this won't cater for everyone. But Can Can we say loved one... Yeah, a loved one. Expand it. But like yep, an yep, older yep. Author- okay. like, uh, oh. authority figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one that you could lose at any moment. Take a policeman or woman <laughs> to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. A Supreme Court judge. <laughs> Find the oldest person in your life. <laughs> yeah. Take Ruth Bader Ginsburg to <laughs> dinner. Dead. I know. Make sure they have it soup on the menu. Very awkward weekend at Bernie's. She can't chew and like she used to. <laughs> No, I get. I like. I like the sentiment. Um, nice. I did it recently. Uh, <laughs> I went out to a really nice dinner with just my mum, and uh, we had a really lovely time. It, of course, started not awkwardly, but it just started clumsily into the idea of sitting down and what do we do? And my, you know, mm. do you want to know where I get all my? Do you want to know where I get together? all my awkward talking from? <laughs> yeah. It's my mum. I know. <laughs> so I met her. The table from each other, and it was just <laughs> muttering, zoms and arings, corrections, filling in time, <laughs> filling in space, but. Uh, we made uh, things calm down. <laughs> Wine was served, um, and we had a really lovely night. And we just talked a lot more than we would in any other situation. Which, for me, in this scenario, was rare. Yeah. Uh, and there's always uh, outside factors, be it other people or be it situations, and nothing ever feels like a nice one to do, like a nice reason to have a good chat. So. I mean, this could translate to many variations of, which is sit down and have a cup of tea with your folks or one of them. But Or, but as, I as will, but Kane Lever said, Gus, find a cop and buy them a burger. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you, the you, going to dinner thing kind of puts you in a position where you're there for at least a couple of hours to enjoy everything that's there versus the cup of tea is like, we had yeah, a yeah, yeah, we yeah. moved on. It's, it's so true. I, I um, uh, don't. My sister, my sister's husband, Peter, and I, we don't get each other birthday presents. Sure. We just go out for a fancy di- dinner every year, like mm-hmm. a big group fancy dinner that covers all of our birthdays, like a degustation thing or whatever. Sure. Because it's Good. so much nicer spending time together totally. than it is trying to find some shitty thing that they probably don't need. Yeah. Have you been out for – well, I mean, when was the last time you went out to dinner with, like, just your sister? Oh, just recently, but that's not, I don't make a habit of that. No, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, so it's like. That sounded bad. I haven't, I haven't, <laughs> yeah, I haven't no, wouldn't. proactively done that. Yeah. But just recently when I went to Byron, I'd, I'd like booked a, a week to like go up there and write and just like be in the sun. And I sent my sister a message and was like, hey, I'm going to Byron. Like, I know you've got like kids and stuff on, but like, would you be able to just come up for the weekend? Like the accommodation is paid for. And she was like, fuck yes. And we had the best weekend together. So yeah, that was awesome. I guess um, it's more the one-on-one kind of 
of thing in a setting oh, sure. that can often be a bit more of a group environment. And yep. so I'm not saying those aren't lovely and I like any excuse or chance you have to have like a bigger meal with lots of people and socialise. But putting myself in a one-on-one -on -one dining situation with a family member that I don't see at, on a more exclusive setting yep. was yep. a real surprise. And it was really lovely and we talked about things we don't talk about much. And yeah, it was lovely and I would highly recommend it to anyone who has the chance, has the opportunity mm. or finds themselves in that setting to the people that you often see in a larger group environment. Yeah. Single them out and <laughs> single them out. Grab them, put them Grab in the back of your car. <laughs> Get to all that awkward Uber drive there. Uh, and yeah, uh, that was what, that's my advice. And yeah, there you go. I like it. <laughs> nice. Nick? So, me. I, well, I have two. I cheated. Uh, Do we have time for two? Save one for oh, next I'll, I'll, I'll save. I'll no, 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 pick no, the best two. one. They'll be, they'll be really quick. Well, it's like one's very, well, not shallow, but like, okay, so the first one is um, Search take, Party, take the TV dinner. show. I recommend everyone watch Search Party. If you haven't watched Search Party, this is a show I'd heard about for a little bit. It's, 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 it just got commissioned for its fifth season by Amazon, I think. It's on Stan at the moment. It's somewhere on a streaming service. Anyway, it's an amazing show. Uh, I've never really watched anything one like moment. it. <clears throat> A oh, fuck you, Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> what did Antonio say? Have two and skip peace. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so it is a show that I would describe as girls meets Breaking Bad. And it is... Both of those shows are fucking sick. Yeah. So. Have you guys seen it? No, you've already... No, but um, you totally sold me on it. Is it Netflix? No, I think it's Prime. Amazon, Amazon Prime. Prime. Yeah. Prime. Um, or Stan. It's somewhere. It's fucking... It's one of them. It's one of them. Yeah. Um, but I have everything. It is... Uh, I've never seen a TV show reinvent itself season to season in a way that this show does. It literally, like, it starts as this show and you go, okay. And the first couple of episodes, we were like, oh, these characters are kind of really annoying and unlikable and none of this feels really re realistic. Now, when we enjoyed the first season it got to the end of the first season we we're like oh fuck and then the second season started we watched the second season in like a day and a half mm. end of the second season we went fuck third season happened well, you battled like galactic at it what the <laughs> hell is going on and then the fourth season and i'm not sure i actually like the fourth season but the fourth season is like if you had told me this is where this show went <laughs> if this is where any TV show went, mm. I would not believe you. So I recommend checking it out. You won't be disappointed because you just haven't seen something like it. Okay, nice. so that's the that thing. Nice. The like real improvement thing, a la you guys, is to take my mum out to dinner. Take us as our mum out for a good time. <laughs> um, uh, no, the, the the thing is something that I started doing years ago, and I still fall on it, but I try as hard as possible. And it is stop apologising for your existence. And the way that I found that I was doing this a lot was in the language that I'm using. So when I go to a, when I used to go to a cafe, I would go. Uh, can I please have the hamburger and the whatever, whatever? And I realized, I'm like, why do I keep asking the waiter, can I have this? Like, I'm here to do that. I would like that. So it's not about being rude. It's just about removing this qualifying language that you sort of like put in your life. So now when I go to a cafe or something, I go, I'll have the hamburger and this. Thanks. Thanks very much. And if they're like, oh, we don't have them. I'm like, oh, no worries. Okay. I'll have this or this. I'm sorry. Not this like, <laughs> can give me permission to okay, have this yeah. thing. Interesting. In the same way as like when I was a freelancer and I used to like email invoices, if I was chasing an invoice, uh -huh. I would write, hey, I'm Sorry. just writing to check about the status of this invoice. Take out the just. Take out the just. Oh. just. Every email you write, just take out the just. Yep. Because yep. suddenly you have this assertive language of like, hey, I'm writing to check out. Or even l less than that, and Will's taking notes right now. Um, less than that, like <laughs> stop, stop asking for things. And, and start just very politely, not rudely, but politely just saying what you want. So it's not, hey, I was wondering what the status of that invoice is. It's, I'm writing to check on the status of that invoice. Like, because you're then going, I am actioning this thing and I want you to do it. And you can it's, just, it's, it's so hard because I find that particularly with email language, things can come off sounding terse. And like, yeah. I find that a lot of the language that I add into, which I do hate mm. and like, where should I put the exclamation mark? And like, I'll just put a couple more in the end so you know that I'm excited, but not too excited, mm. you know? Uh, 
and you do that because you're worried that someone's going to think that you're being like rude or mm-hmm. whatever because mm-hmm. you don't have the tone of the voice. I t- I totally know what you mean. Equals. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> whatever at the end. I often give like an, a, a thumbs up emote is like a go to for me oh, yeah. in an email of like it's like again it's just this like thing of like hey I'm not being a dick but like everything's still fine. But also I think it's fine to just be assertive over that sort of thing. Like if there's no issue being like hey this is a formal. Like, I'm communicating with you formally as opposed to, like, AIM or MSN Messenger or something yeah. where it's like... Once you remove it and you realise you read it back, you're like, you stop reading it back the way you've written it and read it the way they might interpret it. And you're like, oh, it doesn't actually come off as dickish as you think. And, yeah. I mean, it never hurts to leave, you know, you, please and thank yous in there, as, as you said. Like, it's not, can I have this thing? It's like, I'll be having the hamburger, please. Or something. Exactly. Like, yeah, they're yeah. still fine to mm-hmm. leave there as, like, on a suffix. But, like, yeah... And then the other big one, which is less about apologizing for your existence, but more about like giving you giving you space, is um, I found a huge difference when I stopped using the word should and started using the word could instead. There's basically zero scenario where should cannot be replaced with could. And when you use the word should, you say like, uh, like if I was talking to you and you're like, I don't know what to do about X. And I go, well, you should try doing this. The implication is then if you don't do that, you've done it wrong. Like you should do this. It's now you choose to do it or not. And if you don't, then like you should, like you did something wrong. Whereas you could do this is giving you like the option to doing something. And the same way as like, I go, oh, I should have seen that movie. No, oh, I could have seen that movie, but I had, I, but I missed the chance. Yes, because I didn't do anything wrong by not going and seeing the movie. And so it's a little, it's a very small thing. Mm-hmm. But actually when I started changing that language behavior, then I started going like, oh yeah, like, there's, there's not actually a huge amount of expectation on me on like how I'm supposed to live my life compared to everybody else. So that's my I like that life it does you. work, you, the, re- the replacement of could with, sorry, putting could where should, but until that's like, you could definitely do this thing where it's like the, <laughs> when you want to be a certain <laughs> When you were talking thing. to a three-year-old about whether or not he should be wearing his pajamas to bed or not. Should be wearing pants and <laughs> There is no could in that scenario. <laughs> <laughs> but, or you remove it, you go, you will be wearing your pajamas to bed. <laughs> I will be having the hamburger. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so there you go. Peter Burns, fix everyone's life. Yeah. Uh, I thought I'd change things up this week have uh, and have I got a food take. Good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a little food take for That's you all. always a food one. Uh, is, it an, is it an, like, healthy, productive, normal food take? There's nothing wrong with drinking fucking vinegar. <laughs> move on. Um, move on. Weird fucking uh, but this, I think everyone will enjoy this one. Because I think this is a little. This is one that everyone can actually implement. Uh, th- this is actually probably the least healthy one that I have, but everyone will enjoy it. And that advice is to always have a box of donuts within arm's reach. That's a good piece of advice. And Nick, I think you have a box of donuts within arm's reach. <laughs> the whole time. <gasps> it's like season four of Circle. <laughs> Oh, happy, happy birthday, birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, Nick! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday! Yay! Thank you very much. Yay. Um, was this before or after before. I said the thing that I said? This is we yeah we ordered these earlier today and it's then you insane. said been there the whole time. Be, well, it's obviously a very you thing. We know you like donuts. <laughs> I li- and you asked them today. It's because, it's because donuts are the most American confection I've ever come out of the But state. they were sitting there and he's gone, we should order a box of donuts, to which Peter and I then got to play the uh, full panto of... Yeah, yeah, totally. I don't know. In the second ad break, we'll order some donuts. <laughs> I literally said, I think we should order donuts to eat on the street. Yeah. Oh, my God. Thank you very much. That's beautiful. We'll eat these oh, at the post show? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah totally. Um, that's very exciting. Uh, that's a good life tip as well. There you go. Uh, you will get diabetes. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> you that's, the only, that's, that's the only that's the only caveat to go. That's the only caveat to that one. Give them to Nick. Uh, will do you have anything? Uh, not particular. A, a TV show wise, if you've got Apple TV, uh, watch Calls, which is a I think are they like short series? It's or the yeah, podcast it's basically one. like a little yeah. sci-fi. Did audio you say drama. Calls? Yes, Calls. Calls. Call. Call. Like that. C a l double s. Yeah. Well, All right. Okay. No, C a double l s. It's not that anymore, is it? It's more that. But, um, <laughs> These ones. But uh, it's like an audio-driven sci-fi <laughs> thing. It's probably, I think it's like an hour 40 all up with all the episodes. Um, but I don't want to say anything more. Worth a watch if you've got um, Apple TV. Cool. Uh, the other thing is, if you have too many things in your room, which I do, <laughs> I found that just putting them in a box somewhere 
and then away from you for like two months, you've removed the emotional attachment from that thing. Mm. Then you just chuck it on eBay or something and it's gone. I, I, I've needed to do that recently and I just give it a go. I thought you were going nice, to say, nice. then you later find the box and open and it's like, it again. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. that, which is what we do for Scotty so in that we Scotty. hide her toys and then yeah. reintroduce them two weeks later and she's like, this is the greatest Does thing Does she ever. need a bunch of chewy Marvel action figures? <laughs> <laughs> I know someone is Does she need go. some <laughs> FX no, lightsabers? Oh, nothing, yeah. <laughs> no small parts that she could choke on, please. She's our baby girl. Good point. Yeah, That's a good tip. All right. We're done. We had other things planned, but we ran super long and talking about video games. We did, and I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. totally fine. Yep. We've got a post Sorry, show, Will. of course. That was just a close-up. Little, little Will. I think you all deserve to see that. Um, we've got a post show, of course, as we always do for the patrons, uh, for the patrons at the third tier or more. Yes, correct. we're going to do second ad break before we go go though. Oh, do you, yeah. oh yeah, because yeah, there's, there's, there's something else there's in there. Fun in the second ad. Fuck break, it, let's though. just go to it right now. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta move together. Hi. Oh my you god! You recovered! We're there! <laughs> Holy I shit. I can't believe I recovered from that. What's all this? Oh, yeah. That's like a pew brush. <laughs> Hangwing! Hanglings. Hangwine. Oh! Scotty. Is it dinner time? <laughs> fucking burden! Fucking burden! <laughs> fucking nailed that. Oh. Just chill. Just chill. Ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, we're down the shaft on the right. Yeah. Let's do right ball. I get you. That looks like a testicle. Come in all handsome and oh, no. smelling like a mix of earthy clays and Moroccan spices. I'm really proud of you guys. I don't know if it's his aura, or he knows a guy, or he's like a walking broken mirror. Man. But he will cancel your show. It's the penis. Ah! Will... Can we just cut the feed and start again? Did you find... Yeah, I mean, we can go offline, I guess, but... No, it's happening again. Hi. Hi. What the fuck are you gonna do? If you have a show, don't call Raj. Unless you hate that show. And Raj is the man for you. Raj. He'll fuck your shit up. Cosplay? <laughs> Welcome back. Two ads in one day. I know, right? You guys are minute. on fire. <laughs> I'm surprised just want an ad or a virus. You know? <laughs> yeah, totally. I was thinking like there's no framing device around it. Like yeah, yeah, if yeah. you're watching the ad. The, the ad break, it just appears. Everything and it's else like has had a faux product and ours is just a motto of Raj. <laughs> he'll fuck your shit up. No, I love it though. It's, it feels very uh, in keeping with Raj's <laughs> brand. It's now XD. That cosplay is so old. Do one for hands for next week. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. The gauntlet has been thrown. Um... Uh, you also saw in there a uh, little montage of the... That was the last 
game club stream that, that you was guys two of them the last two put together the okay, previous one. Friday, Tuesday the last one yeah, yeah right yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, another one tomorrow I think we're probably going to finish the game we should tomorrow. finish it tomorrow you could finish it tomorrow we could finish it tomorrow I'm <laughs> 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 uh, uh, learning I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> we will definitely finish it tomorrow because we have to so we should finish it tomorrow <laughs> um, and we will we're actually going to start a little earlier tomorrow we're going to start at midday uh, and that means we should be we could be done <laughs> just up I'm sorry. By 2 p.m., but we should be done by 3 at the latest. I'm very confused. Um, <laughs> uh, so come along to the Twitch channel to check out The End of It Takes Two. And the next week, on Tuesday, we are going to have uh, the Game Club episode where we basically just go full spoilery and have a nice, big, meaty, long conversation about that video game and how it made us feel. Yeah, we're going to yep. talk through all of the game, how we felt about it. We'll show off bits of the streams. We'll hopefully get your guys' opinions on it too. Yep. So if you check out the Discord, there is a uh, game club thread there where you can have your own input and we'll sort of draw from that. And yeah, we'll maybe get some people, I don't know how we'll incorporate it yet, we'll, but it's going to involve you guys and us like a book club kind of thing, the original plan. Yeah. So it should be fun. It'll probably be on Monday. We'll format everything and, and perhaps get a form in there, a Google form in there to formalize some of the stuff that we'd yep. like to hear from you guys. So yeah, keep an eye for that, and we'll, we'll make sure point. we'll add everyone it on the Discord now and then to finish it if you're playing it. So. Yep. Totally. And uh, for some people talking, uh, it'll be a, it'll be a stream. It will be uh, live streamed in the afternoon on Tuesday. We've we've actually just got to finalize the time because we've got something else happening that day that we need to just like figure out that timing. And so we'll let you know over the next couple of days on that. Uh, but then of course it will go up on our YouTube channel as well. So you know, and it's miss a, it if you don't see it. Totally. Uh, it's a studio show. Sure. So we'll be all being here. Um, all the bells and whistles, that kind of stuff as well. Yep, it will be a live studio show. Um, yeah, and we, we're, we're going to try a little earlier than the, the night show for this uh, and um, we'll see how it goes and then we'll yeah keep it going as we go month it's to month. It's classic daytime t TV viewing. <laughs> a book club it feels is. A book like club, a That was the thing. thing that we kind of like kept landing on. It was like, you can't do a book club at night. No, no. you're reading at night yeah. in bed with a cup of tea. Yeah. Or you're playing a video game next year but yeah uh and then if uh you're looking for something to do on monday then we got the back podcast happening on monday every monday morning 10 30 aest on this very twitch channel uh all right is that it that is it oh. i think that's it that is that's it. it we are done there is a post show we would like you to come along to the post show you don't have to and you can't unless you've paid a certain amount of money each month and you know if you have done that or not because you know the link in the discord and a bunch of you are going to go there right now and open that channel wait for pete to post that link and if you do have that link, we'll see you there very soon. Before we go, Pete, <gasps> a massive thank you to the people who definitely have that link. And that is Reese Oranishi, exclamation mark, Tim Mason, not Nathan, Slowpunk, Loki Cat, Raj, Akarash, Camo, Ovexia, Nicrotex, Boxy, The Coastal City, Max Jazz Games, Vega Bus, and A. Timothy. These are our top stitches and above sponsors. We love you guys. We love all you guys. I can't say all your names. There's way too many of you, but your names have been scrolling along the bottom of the screen. A lot of you have access to the post show, and you're going to get that post show. Right now.